Fox Sports. We are Blackhawk. We are Arizona. Welcome to Minnesota, where, as Garrison Keeler says, all the women are strong, all the men are good-looking, and all the children are above average. It's the final road series of the season for the D-backs, who need one win to avoid 100 losses, facing the Twins, who are trying to dodge a fourth straight 90-loss season. We'll get a look at two teams with some very promising youngsters looking to the future here on Fox Sports Arizona. Good evening from beautiful Target Field and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume, Bob Brenly along the way. This is it, the final road series of the year in 2014. D-backs with three against the Minnesota Twins and we're not too far from Homer, Michigan. And Homer, Michigan native Josh Coleman gets the ball. Boy, he has been amazing lately, Bob. Boy, he really has been, partner. I'll tell you what, a lot of the players individually stumbling toward the finish line as a team, the Diamondbacks stumbling toward the finish line. But Josh Coleman just gets better and better with each passing outing really making a statement for his addition to that rotation next year. An ERA of about one over his last five starts. He's up against Ricky Nolasco. You'll remember him, of course, with the Marlins and the Dodgers last year. Uh, the Twins offensively will provide a tough challenge for Josh Coleman. We mentioned some promising youngsters. They do really have some young hitters here. And we're going to see a lot of them in this series, uh, including uh, Osvaldo Arcia, Trevor Plouffe, and Danny Santana. All three of these guys figure heavily into the future. The Twins coming into this series uh, outside of Joe Maurer and uh, Joe Maurer. I probably couldn't tell you too much about the Twins, but looking forward to see some of their young stars. Well, the D-backs have brought their big bat here as well. Mark Trumbo coming off his two home runs yesterday at Coors Field, trying to carry that through to the first of three here tonight at Target Field. Back with more from downtown Minneapolis right after this on Fox Sports Arizona. I think uh, I need to I need to drive the ball. I need to hit the ball in the air.
Diamondbacks Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Jack of the Box, if the D-backs hit a home run today, score a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with a purchase of a large drink. And welcome back. We're getting set for first pitch here. Diamondbacks baseball coming your way. Interleague play resuming here in Minneapolis in September. Jody Jackson with you. Now one player who has had some experience here at Target Field, and there aren't many in this dugout. Well, it's Mark Trumbo. He actually said this is one of his favorite ballparks. So last year, I should say yesterday, in Colorado, two home runs for Trumbo, who is batting 300 in his last 10 games. I asked him what he's been working on that's been making a difference. Cutting out the grounders. I'm not a guy that, you know, there's no money for me on the ground. Um, I think uh, I, need to, I need to drive the ball. I need to hit the ball in the air. Um, and it's, it's frustrating when you're not doing it, but um, fortunately today I was able to, to get a few out there, and, and that's kind of what I need to do. All right, so Mark Trumbo uh, looking to try to keep things turned around here for Minnesota, or against Minnesota as the Diamondbacks have struggled to put up consistent offense. So that would certainly help Josh Colmenter, who takes the mound today for the Diamondbacks, looking for win number 11 on the season and trying to stop the Diamondbacks' six-game losing streak. Stay tuned. First pitch next. Fox Sports Arizona from downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. Steve Berthew, Bob Brentley, and Jody Jackson with you. It's the first of three, the D-backs and the Minnesota Twins, who are 66 and 89 this year, last in the American League Central and 20 games behind the Tigers for with the division lead. But they've got a veteran out there tonight, your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Twins. 26th start this year for Ricky Nolasco. You'll remember him from last year, the former Marlin and Dodger who has been very hittable this year in his first season with Minnesota. His catcher tonight, Kurt Suzuki. 
you know, when his breaking balls are on, um, you know, he, he tends to be a little bit more effective, and uh, he has a changeup as well, too, mixing a uh, slider, curveball changeup, and then a good fastball with a little bit of two-seam action on it every once in a while. But, you know, the big thing is just, just commanding the fastball the Bulls has the plate, and when, when he really has that, everything becomes a little bit more effective, and, you know, that's when he's at his best. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> We've heard that same scouting report from Tuffy Gosowicz and Miguel Montero. Command of the fastball. Everything works off of that. Alaska with a two-seamer and a four-seamer. His out pitch is the slider, especially against right-handed hitters. He'll go to that a lot in two-strike counts. We'll mix in an occasional slow curve and a split-finger fastball for the changeup. Depending on which one he has a better feel for, he'll go to one of those two ladder pitches a little bit more. Just five wins. His strikeouts are down a bit this year, and he has been getting whacked around, averaging more than 11 hits for every nine innings pitched, which is why the whip was so high. He is not walking a ton of guys. He's just getting hits. First of three, D-backs and Twins, the final road series in 2014, and Ender Inciarte looks at ball one from Ricky Nolasco. We are underway. Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, is our plate umpire tonight. Ender 267 and four homers. I'm at Bax trying to shake this road losing streak, which is now at 10 games, their longest in four years. A nice, comfortable 69 degrees at first pitch in downtown Minneapolis on a gorgeous night. Trevor Plouffe, a couple of steps in on the grass at third against Inciarte, who is up there with a 2-1 count right now. I know it's your first visit to Target Field, partner. What do you think? Spectacular. It's it, really nice, isn't it? I've been looking forward to this trip all year long because I've never had the chance to go to this ballpark, and it's been on my list. It is absolutely gorgeous. They did a spectacular job here. And what a night for it. Look at this weather. Just a beautiful day in Minnesota today. There's Minnie and Paul, the old school logo out there. What a ballpark right in downtown. This easily is on the top five now for yeah. now. And Major League Baseball, I thought, did a great job during the All-Star game this year of really showcasing this ballpark. A lot of people, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, you don't get to Minnesota unless you have business or a reason to be here and uh, really showcase this ballpark well during the All-Star festivities. It is uh, quite a facility, that's for sure. Ballpark. Acquired about $400 million in public financing. The total price tag got up to about $550 million. And they talked about a retractable roof. That would have added another $200 million onto the price tag. Too much, so they went open air. But people here love it. They are they are outdoor people in Minnesota. They want to be outside. Ender and Ciarte. What else is new? He leads off the game with a base hit to right center field. And so Ender Inciarte continues to hit. He's now hit in 11 straight games. This is the batting order for Kirk Gibson's Arizona Diamondbacks. Ender Inciarte leads it off. What's new? He's on base to start the ball game. A.J. Pollock will follow. David Peralta in the three spot. Mark Trumbo with his fourth career multi-homer game at Coors Field yesterday. Miguel Montero doing the catching. Aaron Hill serving as the designated hitter tonight. Jake Lamb at third. Chris Owings at second base. And Didi Gregorius at shortstop. Ciarte aboard. Here's A.J. Pollock batting second tonight. Looks at strike one. A.J. 304 on the year. Seven home runs. Of course, the Twins have played. Well, they've had history here in three different ballparks. They originally were at Old Metropolitan Stadium in suburban Bloomington. Where they had some great teams there in the 1960s. That is now the Mall of America. A mall so big it has a roller coaster inside. And then, they, of course, they were at the Metrodome from 1982 through 2009, just down the street here. And then beautiful Target Field, and what a ballpark this is. It couldn't be a, a more opposite experience for the fans and the players <laughs> alike <laughs> going from the old uh, Homer Dome over to this place. The baggy. I went to a bunch of games there, and it felt like a football stadium. And Ciarte takes off the pitches inside for a ball, and Ender is in there with his 17th stolen base. Not a tremendous jump, but a tough pitch for Suzuki to handle behind the plate. Anytime you have to reach to your left to receive the pitch, it's going to take you a lot longer to drag that ball across your body, get into a throwing position. Ender steals that one easily. 
So he's now 17 for 20 on the year. One and two to A.J. Pollock. There's a bouncer in the hole. Danny Santana, the shortstop. A.J. with good speed. Beats it out. Inciarte stays put. And the D-backs have runners on first and second with no outs to open up the ball game. That's Danny Santana. They say he is the shortstop of the future, but he's been playing center field all summer. He got to the ball in good shape. Uh, fortunately for A.J. Pollock and the D-backs had trouble finding the handle when he went into the glove. Had to take a couple of extra steps before firing across to first base. And with A.J. speed, you might as well stick it in your pocket. And he is a player to watch in this series. Young Danny Santana. So two on, nobody out for David Peralta. Peralta, 294, seven home runs. He has hit safely in 10 of his last 11 games. And that 294 batting average for David. Only four points behind the Giants. Joe Panic among National League rookies who have at least 200 at bats. So in any rookie of the year discussion, you have to include this young man. Velasco's coming off uh, his best start of the season against the Tigers last time out. Eight shutout innings, gave up only five base hits, struck out five, walked one. And it's been kind of a hit or a miss season for him. At times when his stuff is good, as you heard his catcher Kurt Suzuki say, he can be very effective, at other times very hittable. Doug Bernier, Danny Santana, and a nice scoop at first by Chris Parmalee. And the Twins roll the double play, and Ciarte gets into third, but now there are two outs. Nice play by the second baseman Bernier to get that ball quickly to the shortstop. It's very tough to turn that double play from the right side of the infield because of all the movement that that second baseman has to go through to get the ball to the shortstop. But Twins executed that one perfectly. So a runner at third with two down for Trumbo in the cleanup spot tonight after his two homer day yesterday in Colorado. Numbers 10 and 11 on the year for Mark who's in there at 239. There's strike one. His first multi-homer game with the Diamondbacks. Now up to 53 RBIs. <laughs> oh and two. Always takes a while at a new ballpark to find the uh, radar gun. <laughs> Where's the score? Where's the count? A lot of things to look at out there in the outfield behind the fences. That great logo out there. An old school Minnie and Paul logo right in center field. Trumbo strikes out, so the Diamondbacks get a pair of singles to open up the ball game. They cannot get a run across, and we are underway at Target Field on Fox Sports Arizona.
downtown Minneapolis. D-backs have lost six straight, 13 of their last 16, trying to snap this losing skid, and they have got the right man on the mound to do it. Your Arizona Ford starting pitcher is Josh Colmenter, outstanding in his previous five starts, and tonight facing the Minnesota Twins for the first time in his career. Here's Kirk Gibson. Coley's been on a good run. We hope that that can continue, and you know, his real magic is uh, not because he throws 95 miles an hour. It's just because he's great at locating his pitches, and certainly his fastball probably has the best fastball location anybody on our staff, and it's worked well. He has been sensational last five starts. His ERA for the year has come down almost a full run in only one month. 26 starts, the 165 innings pitched. Already career highs, and a win tonight would be his 11th, also a career high. Well, I mentioned it in the open of the show as a lot of guys are stumbling toward that finish line. Uh, Josh just seems to be getting stronger. He had that one start where we questioned whether maybe he was nearing the end, and he has bounced back in a huge way here to finish the season. 165 innings as we begin tonight. He threw 92 last year. And a good start. He strikes out Danny Santana and open up the ball game. And so Josh already has thrown 73 more innings than he did all of last year. Danny Santana strikes out to lead it off for Ron Gardenhire's Minnesota Twins. See the numbers for Santana this season, second among all American League rookies. Chris Herman will be batting second. Trevor Plouffe in the three-hole. Kenny Vargas DHing. Oswaldo Arcia in right field. Kurt Suzuki doing the catching. Chris Parmalee at first. Aaron Hicks in center field. And at second base will be Doug Bernier. And a bit of a makeshift lineup for Ron Gardenhire's troops tonight. Uh, no Dozier and no Joe Maurer. Some of their big bats getting the night off. Here's Chris Herman who's in there in left field. Uh, Herman getting the start out there tonight. He's only had 60 plate appearances in the big leagues this year. And he's one of those guys that seems to bounce back and forth between the big leagues and AAA. This is a slow roller to second, right to Chris Owings. Two down. Herman also a guy that bounces back and forth from behind the plate to the outfield. He's listed as a catcher in the Twins media guide, but finds himself playing left field here tonight. And here is one of their big bats in the lineup. A guy who's had a terrific year both at the plate and defensively at third. It's Trevor Plouffe. Who had a walk-off single in the 10th inning that beat the Indians here on Friday night. He's at 2.53 and 14 homers. 79 RBIs leads the team. Also has 40 doubles to go along with those 14 homers. Holmans are out there throwing strikes. Ploof has it safely in four straight and seven of his last eight. A couple of home runs over that span. He's hit eight home runs since the All-Star break. He's got good power. And his career high for doubles had been 22. As Bob mentioned, he's up to 40 already. And the RBIs, which lead the Twins, also a career high. Cole Mentor ahead, one and two. I love the way Josh Colmenter works up and down in the strike zone. Now, of course, he can hit the corners when he wants to go in and out, but he's most effective when he's working across the top of the zone and then down at the bottom of the knees like that. A terrific first inning for Josh Colmenter. He strikes out two, no score at target field.
here with us in Minnesota. And hey, D-backs fans, download the Circle K mobile app today on your mobile device and visit your local Circle K for details. Find out how with the purchase of a 20-ounce Pepsi, you can win tickets to Super Bowl 49 in Arizona this February. Right everywhere we look here, D-backs yeah. fans, a bunch of them made the trip out here. Good idea, last to run in summertime. And what a great uh, week we've had here weather-wise. Supposed to be gorgeous here for these three games. Miguel Montero leads off the second against Ricky Nolasco. Maybe quickly down 0-2. Well, and one thing we know about this ballpark also, they have great chow here. Buckets of donuts. Are you kidding me? Yeah, my wife, uh, Cindy, brought us <laughs> literally a bucket of donuts that... Uh, she got out there in center field. They got walleye on a stick out there. Mm. You ever had that? No, not yet. I, I, you know, being a <laughs> big fisherman, I thought you'd be all over that. Montero strikes out. Second strikeout for Nolasco. The Minnesota State Fair is a huge deal here. Last two weeks of August. And it is big time. In, in terms of state fairs, it's got to be at or near the top. And they have all the food you can get at the Minnesota State Fair here in the ballpark. Nice. And it's, uh, I mean, you can get a bucket of homemade donuts, walleye on a stick, all kinds of weird, wild stuff. Aaron Hill. Aaron is the DH tonight. Is that a big adjustment for a National League manager? It is. It was uh, a little troubling, as a matter of fact, trying to figure out the best way to handle the DH. Uh, when I initially took the job with the Diamondbacks and we played interleague, we said we're going to give somebody who maybe needs a day off. Like, you know, Gonzo, a guy that plays every day at his position, uh, give him a half a day off as the DH, but I found that that didn't really work extremely well. He didn't DH well? Well, none of the regulars or, you know, so-called regulars served well as a DH. I found it was much better to take a guy like a Rubio Durazo or Greg Colburn, one of your guys who was used to pinch hitting, one at bat at a time, sitting for a long time, waiting for that next at bat. Uh, I, in my experience, it was better to have a guy who was used to that role. Aaron Hill and knocked the center. Third hit for the Diamondbacks against Nolasco. And Aaron... And that base is loaded walk for an RBI Thursday at Coors Field. That was his only appearance against the Rockies. He sat out the final three games, so he's back in the lineup, and he's got himself a base hit. Jake Lamb in there at third tonight. 225 and four homers. Jake Lamb, Bob, as this road trip goes on, continues to swing a good bat coming off that quad injury. Yeah, line drive home run at Coors Field. Uh, the first of what we hope are many home runs for Jake Lamb at Coors Field over the course of his career. Really has shortened up his swing a little bit, getting to the ball quicker, especially driving it up the middle to the opposite field. Yeah, he struck out 27 times in his first 68 major league at bats. And this is a guy who had always had a reputation in the minor leagues as a very patient hitter, got himself into good hitters counts. But when he first got up here, he admitted understandably too that he was a little overexcited, maybe over aggressive up there. But that has certainly calmed down here as of late. In front of the D-back dugout, Plouffe has it in foul ground, two outs. up Chris Owings back in the lineup tonight. Hey fans, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. And our promo code D-backs50 at PapaJohns.com. CO, the bat has slowed a bit as of late, 262 on the year. It was one for 11 in the series at Coors Field. Four strikeouts, so a day off yesterday. Back in there tonight. There's a strike going to one. And in 17 games since he returned from the DL, 16 of them starts. He has hit 203, so the bat has been a little slow to come back.
And something we've seen recently from CO that we didn't see uh, initially when he got to the major leagues is strike zone discipline. He's been a little overly aggressive, chasing some pitchers' pitches, chasing some balls out of the zone. The D-backs are certainly familiar with Ricky Nolasco. Faced him four times last year, both with Miami and Los Angeles, after he went from the Marlins to the Dodgers in midseason. And he was very effective against the D-backs. Four starts, a 3-0 record, a 2-7-0 ERA. And he got a big payday to come here, and it has not worked out at all well. The most expensive free agent signing in Twins history, in fact. A four-year deal worth $49 million. Two and two now. I'm just going to say, uh, speaking of the Dodgers, something we don't like to do a lot of, but a big game tonight. Jake Peavy against Dan Heron, Giants and Dodgers. Big time, huh? Well, the way Peavy's been pitching, he has been lights out. Suzuki sets up down and away, and Owings chases. That's three strikeouts for Nolasco, who strands the one-out single and keeps it scoreless here in Minnesota. Diamondbacks Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Phoenix International Raceway. Don't miss the NASCAR semifinals on November 9th. Get tickets for the Quicken Loans Race for Heroes 500 at phoenixraceway.com. And by Panda Express, introducing Panda Express online ordering. Target Field in downtown Minneapolis. Steve with you, Bob Brindley, Jody Jackson with you. It's the D-backs and the Twins as Kenny Vargas leads off for Minnesota against Josh Colmenter, who set down the side in order in the first, including two strikeouts. This is a guy you will want to sit down and watch. Big Kenny Vargas, 6'5", 275. And he is absolutely crushing everything these days. Big raw power, BB. This guy, when he gets them, they go. One thing we know for sure about Kenny Vargas, he will not walk. WW. No, man, I'm telling you. 57 strikeouts, four walks this season. So through his first 200 or so plate appearances in the major leagues, he has walked four times. <laughs> he is up there swinging, <laughs> which is also why he's striking out once every four at-bats, but is still hitting over 290 on the year. That shows you the contact-to-damage ratio. A switch hitter, best from the left-hand side, reaches down and pokes that one up in the air to right center field. A.J. Pollock is there to track it down. 
Pretty good size outfield here at Target Field, but not too big for A.J. that time. You got to play deep for Vargas, respecting his power, and then a long way to run that time for A.J. Pollock. Gets there with a dive to record the first out here in the bottom half of the second inning. That brings up another young hitter you'll want to keep an eye on in this series. Another left-hand bat that hits for a ton of power. Osvaldo Arcia really just hammering the ball in the second half of the year. Had seven homers in August. Had 23 RBIs in 24 games last month. He's hit 14 homers since the All-Star break. He's in there at 233 and 19 for the year. A really fun young hitter to watch. And the issue now, much like it is with Vargas, is he's been a little bit of an all-or-nothing type guy. Crushes it a lot. Strikes out even more often. There's a bouncer with the shift on against Arcia. Two down. A little tougher to prepare for a series like this against a team that you rarely, if ever, see. You have to really rely a lot on your spray charts and... Your video scouting, try to garner as much information as you can, maybe from some National League teams that have also played against the Twins this year. Just try to get uh, as quickly as you can up to speed on a lot of guys you don't know much about. Ron Gardner is the one guy you do know. He's been the manager of this Twins for the last 75 years. <laughs> it just seems like it. And he is one of the best. Kurt Suzuki, you know him, of course, longtime Oakland A. Spent some time with the Washington Nationals at All-Star this year. 291 and three homers having a very nice season here in Minnesota. Just shy of his 31st birthday. Thirteenth season. Only seems like 75. A thousand wins and a thousand losses. Twins, uh, if they lose tonight, will suffer their fourth straight 90 loss season. Momenter ahead of Suzuki now, a ball and two strikes. Yeah, one thing that could always be said about the Twins, along with the Atlanta Braves until just recently, was their consistency in their front office and their field manager. They rarely, rarely make changes. The Braves made a big change today. Frank Wren was dismissed as GM. Two balls and two strikes to Kurt Suzuki, an eight-game hitting streak. He's got six doubles during the streak and six RBIs. And Terry Ryan, the Twins GM. They have a lot of good young hitters in this organization, and they're all starting to come up. And we're seeing several of them tonight. Bluff has been here for a while. He's a bit further along, but Santana, the shortstop. Vargas, the DHRC, the right fielder. Got a center fielder they're a little disappointed in, Aaron Hicks. They've got Byron Buxton, the second overall pick from a couple of years ago, coming up as well. Miguel Sano, they got a whole lot of hitting talent here. They just do not have any pitching, which is why they gave Ricky Nolasco about 50 million bucks. They brought over Phil Hughes as well from the Yankees. He's had a good year here. They traded Denard Spann to the Nationals. They got a top pitching prospect back in return. Big left-hander Alex Meyer. He's in the minor leagues. Yeah, we'll see Phil Hughes in the uh, series finale on Wednesday. Suzuki pokes that one down the right field line. A long run down there for Peralta, but it's in the seats. The pride of Homer, Michigan, not too far away. Josh Colmenter. This is as close as he can get to a homecoming, I guess. Figure out if we're closer to Homer here or in Detroit. Google Maps. Nice. A lot of D-backs fans here. A lot of them made the trip out to check out downtown Minneapolis. Suzuki gets a hold of one, but all that room in center field makes it an easy play for A.J. Pollock. Six up, six down for Josh Coleman. Enter no score target field.
some balls in first, second pitch, and I was swinging at them. So sometimes I just, I just try to take the first pitch and see what they're trying to do with me so that I can have a plan, a better plan, and see what I'm trying to do against the pitcher. Our Geico quoted the game from Ender and Ciarte, who now has an 11-game hitting streak. And, guys, I was asking him what was working, just being patient at the plate. He said, yeah, not trying to be too jumpy. And uh, I believe we did not see him swing at that first pitch. It's not like Martin Prado, though. He was quick to clarify. He said he only does it once in a while. But uh, against pitchers that he hasn't seen, like a Ricky Nolasco, that may be more the case for Ender during this particular series. Thank you, Jody. Ender on deck as we open up the top of the third with D.D. Gregorius batting ninth tonight against Ricky Nolasco. D.D. 2-11 and six homers. He's hit in three straight. Pops him up coming back this way, and that's in the seats. I see a Google mapping over yeah, there. Yeah, I'm working hard over here. From Minneapolis to Homer, Michigan is approximately 600 miles. Wow, that far. Huh? Yeah. From uh, Homer, Michigan to Detroit is only 100 miles. Oh, so it's a lot closer. And Cleveland was only 200 miles. I know Josh had some family when we were playing the Indians earlier this season. Now, I'm stunned that you, the great fisherman that you are, didn't bring your whole uh, nah. rig up here. This is fishing paradise. I, I've been out on Lake Minnetonka a few times. You and, and Prince. Uh, varying degrees of success, but uh, yeah, this is a fishing paradise up here. Here you go, BB. Oh! oh. Uh, so close. In and out of the hands. Jeez. It was just a little out of my range. That's why you're a backup catcher. <laughs> uh, the Twins fans here are killing him right now. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Uh, a few inches higher. It's an easy play. It got me out on the fingertips. What can I say? Came right up into our booth and just missed. That one lands in foul ground. Aditi's still alive. Takes well, a, it was a heck of an effort. Takes a year and into the last week of the second year before we had our first chance. Jeez. Well, you were gone, and we had a couple in the booth when Gonzo was with us, and you were killing me on the text. Yeah. I leave the booth for one series, and the fielding percentage drops. Don't expect Gonzo to make a defensive play. Wow. I think our fielding percentage is zero this year, in fact. <laughs> Can't get any lower. He reaches down and gets that up in the air to right field, but Osvaldo Arce is there. And that's the first out in the third. Arce is a show out there. He uh, does all kinds of stuff. He likes to have a good time, as you can tell by the haircut. And you never... Twins guys were telling us you're never quite sure what you're going to see out there from this young man. He might make some mistakes from time to time, rookie mistakes, but uh, he'll score some style points. He's always styling. Speaking of which, Ender Inciarte steps in a single to lead off the ball game. His hitting streak now at 11, as Jody Jackson mentioned a moment ago. And Ender batting over 350 during that streak, including four doubles. He's now at 269 on the year. And Plouffe will sneak in again on the grass at third. And remember, it was only about a month ago that Ender had an 18-game hit streak, and now he's up to 11 this time. Two and one. Gary Cedarstrom is in a, absolutely no hurry at all to call it a strike. He likes to take his time. Fisted in the seats and out of play. Only two National League rookies have more hits this year than Ender and Ciarte. Billy Hamilton of the Reds. And Yon Harry Solarte with San Diego, who spent half his season with the Yankees. Ender counting tonight 105 hits in 113 games. Bidding for another one here, but a nice play at first by Chris Parmalee. Pitcher just didn't get over to cover. Parmalee had nobody to toss the ball to. Nolasco got caught spectating out there on the mound, and it cost him an infield hit right there. $50 million for Ricky Nolasco, and he forgot to cover first. Whoops. Parmalee made a nice play to get to that ball as well down the line. 
Make it hurt. Boy, this is one of the very first fundamental drills that every team does in spring training. Day one, they get the pitchers out there. They hit ground balls to the right side. The catcher stands behind home plate and yells, get over, get over, get over. And here we are in September, the end of September, and a veteran like Ricky Nolasco doesn't do his job. Well, they have no other choice but to give Enciarte a hit there. That's four hits for the D-backs. He's two for two. Well, that's got to drive Ron Gardner nuts. Oh. Just absolutely bonkers. Giving you $50 million. Get over there. A.J. Pollock singled his first time. Last time NCRT was at first, he stole his 17th base of the year. And that's why they're paying a lot of attention to him. But I find it funny when a pitcher doesn't cover first base and a guy reaches, they always try to pick him off three or four times. Try to make up for their initial mistake. Get yourself off the hook. Ball one to AJ. Things have not uh, gone well for in Alaska. He's 0 and 5 over his last eight starts. Although he's pitched a little bit better than that lately. Twins have not scored for him. He's received just 11 runs of support during that eight game winless stretch. And Ciarte takes off again. AJ lifts it to shallow center field. Aaron Hicks is coming in. And Ender will get back to the bag at first. Two down. Hey fans, anytime the D back scores six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. David Peralta hit into a double play his first time up. Strike one. D backs trying to find some offense. Let off the ball game with singles by Enciarte and Pollock could not get a run across. Peralta's double play killed that inning a little bit. He laces that one foul just by Lance Barksdale, the umpire at first. This was a rocket down there. Well, that looked like a kicked up chalk right in front of the base, which would tell me it went over the bag before it got into foul territory. That's a tough call for a first base umpire because uh, you're trying to get out of the way of a rocket at the same time to see whether it's fair or foul. Coming inside here with Peralta down 0-2. See Ender having a running conversation with Dave McKay down there at first. Always stands in the same spot, Dave McKay, so he can get a consistent look at that pitcher's move. Enciarte bluffs and Peralta strikes out. That's four strikeouts for Ricky Nolasco. No score in Minneapolis.
Here on Fox Sports Arizona, the Arizona Coyotes begin their hockey season. They'll take on Winnipeg Thursday, October 9th, 6 o'clock, for a special one-hour Coyotes live pregame show. And then the Suns get things started against those Lakers Wednesday, October 29th, 6.30, for Suns live pregame right here on Fox Sports Arizona. A little hint of fall in the air here in Minneapolis, up in the Northlands. Chris Parmalee, the first baseman, leads off the third against Josh Kuhlmenter. Parmalee getting the start at first base tonight. The former first-round pick who has just not hit much in the big leagues. Played in just over 100 games last year. Hit 228. Hit 229 the year before. Here's a ball in the air to right that drops in front of Peralta for a base hit. First hit for Minnesota against Josh Colmenter. Yeah, we've talked about Josh Colmenter and the run that he's been on here at the end of the season. The lowest ERA in the big league since August 22nd. Only Jake Peavy and Francisco Liriano have put up lower numbers than Josh Colmenter. Boy, when you think about how undermanned the Diamondbacks are offensively, how little help that they're getting from the bullpen, the fact that Josh has been able to put up those kind of numbers tells you how dominating he has been. And the gap in innings over last year when he worked exclusively out of the bullpen is just remarkable. He keeps getting deeper and deeper, further and further away from last year's innings total. And the more he does, the better he gets, it seems. Beginning the ball game tonight, having already thrown 73 more innings than he did all of last year. Aaron Hicks, the center fielder. And this is a guy they're a little mad at right now. They have big plans for him, a former first-round pick. He arrived for Sunday's game only two hours before game time, which did not please his teammates, and certainly not Ron Gardenhire. We made sure that Hicks was benched. He happened to be a late scratch from the game the night before with a sore back. And not only was he not there Sunday early to get treatment, he was late. And Garden Hire was described in the papers here as visibly irate. And rightfully so. I mean, this is a guy, uh, as you mentioned, a number one draft pick back in 08. Has regressed every season of his professional career. The numbers have gone the wrong direction. Yeah, he has been a bust so far. There's no question. Only the 14th player selected overall in OA and out of Woodrow Wilson High School in Long Beach. He's a switch hitter. There's GM Terry Ryan. They are not pleased. And there has been very little progress from Hicks. He got his first look at the big leagues in 81 games last year. Did not hit. 198 for the career. Has not hit this year either. And you've got Hicks, a first rounder. You've got Oswaldo Arcia, who's out there tonight. You've got Byron Buxton, uh, the young phenom who was the second overall pick two years ago by the Twins. That group figured to be a pretty promising outfield trio if they can get them developed and get them all playing together. But Hicks is just not cooperating. He lays off the 3 2, and it's a walk. So, Colmenter, who retired the first six he faced, issues a single and a base on balls to open up the third, and here's Doug Bernier, the second baseman. And Josh really upset with himself. He doesn't mind giving up base hits. That means he's throwing strikes, but walking batters <laughs> really gets under his skin. You could see he was visibly upset after, after ball four. So two on, no outs, and here's Bernier, who at 34 years old is practically a rookie in terms of major league experience. He's had just six plate appearances in the big leagues this year. He's got one hit. Corners are in for the Diamondbacks. Trumbo from first, Lamb from third. Showing bunt there on the first delivery from Josh. Uh, we're told the Twins don't push a lot of buttons. They've got a couple guys with base stealing speed, and if they get them on in the right situation, uh, Ron Gardenhire is likely to turn him loose, but very little bunting, very little hitting and running. Do you find there is still that noticeable style difference between National League and American League teams? We always hear that 
They play a National League brand of ball. They play an American League brand of ball. I think there is. It's not quite as pronounced as it used to be now that the umpires work both American League and National League games. There used to be a very different strike zone. Uh, but uh, Joe Torrey put it best. I asked him about it uh, years ago when I was uh, covering the postseason for the network, and he said in the National League there's an urgency to make something happen before the pitcher gets to the plate. In the American League, you don't have that because you've got nine hitters. But in the National League, when you know you probably have an out coming up in that nine spot in the lineup, you want to make something happen before you get there. Bernier fouls the bunt away. It's two and two. Yeah, we always have that idea that National League teams bunt and steal a lot of bases and scratch out hits. The American League teams have these big lumbering guys that just swing for the fences all the time and they go station to station. Two on, no outs, two balls, two strikes to Doug Bernier, the second baseman who played this whole season at Triple A Rochester. Hit 280 there with six homers. Along the right field line, drifting near the seats, and it's out of play. Nice catch down there. Nice job. That's why you bring your glove. He's even got a first baseman's mitt. Got those seats right close to first base. Decided to bring his first baseman's mitt tonight. Got his sweats on, too, in case he has to move fast. <laughs> kind of seems like he's been down there before. Another 2-2. How about Doug Bernier? He played two games with the Rockies in 2008. Had four at-bats, went 0 for 4. Did not get another at-bat in the major leagues until five years later. And that was last season here with the Twins. In between appearances in the majors, he was in the minor leagues with the Rockies, the Yankees, and the Pirates. Momentum misses inside, and he's run it full on Bernier. Three balls and two strikes. Josh retired the first six he faced. Got two strikeouts in the first. Santana was one of them to lead off the ball game for Minnesota. But he's gone off the rails a bit here in the third. A single to Parmalee, a walk to Hicks, and now three and two on Bernier. And you would call a journeyman at best. Josh Colmenter, 42 pitches right now, 26 for strikes. The 3 2 to Doug Bernier. And he got a big strikeout there for the first out in the third. Three strikeouts for Colmenter. Here comes Santana. Well, that is a big strikeout. It looked like the Twins were going to have runners at second and third with one out as Bernier was trying to bunt earlier in that bat, but now you still have runners at first and second. One out in the inning, a ground ball away from getting out of this jam. Yeah, this is a guy that can run Danny Santana, the 23-year-old rookie. 317 on the year. He's got 11 hits in his last seven games, including four doubles and a triple. So if he finds a gap, he can run. Santana, a switch hitter. He is best from the left-hand side, over 330 as a lefty, including five of his seven home runs. Fly ball, right center field. Easy play for A.J. Pollock. Parmalee's at second. He will bluff and hold. And that's the second out. So Colmenter, one more out to wiggle off the hook after putting the first two men on in this inning. Well, after some initial frustration with the walk to Hicks to put runners at first and second with nobody out, this is what you'd love to see a pitcher do. He was upset with himself. He showed it. He got it out of his system and went right back to work. Got 
two quick outs and now could possibly escape this inning unscathed. Parmalee led off the third with a single. Home enter walk Hicks. Struck out Bernier. Got Santana to fly out. Now here's Chris Herman, the left fielder. Rounded out his first time up. Had a big day here yesterday in the Twins win over Cleveland. A pair of doubles. He lays off that one. Did not go. Says Mark Ripperger down at third. Chris Herman out of Tomball, Texas. Played college ball at Miami. He's one of Jody Jackson's Hurricanes. Sixth round pick by the Twins in 09. Drives that one to right. It drops in front of Peralta. Parmalee being waved oh, home. They geez. overthrow everything, and now everybody moves up. That has something that we have seen with this ball club since day one, and with only six games to go in this season, we are still seeing it all the time. That's just inexcusable. I mean, not only uh, do you have no chance to get the runner at home plate, Parmalee doesn't run well, but with two outs in the inning, he's off on the crack of the bat. He's going to score easily on that little soft drive into right field. Hit the cutoff, man. Try to hold the other two runners at their bases. But instead, Hicks is at third. Herman now in scoring position as well. It's second on the throw. one nothing Twins, and here's trouble in Trevor Plouffe. Because this guy is a good hitter, and with one swing, anything through the infield scores two here. Plouffe struck out his first time. There's the strike, one and one. Trevor Plouffe two years ago showed some real power, hit 24 home runs. He went on one power surge, went over one 14-game stretch, he hit 10 homers. And during that streak, had 21 hits, 10 home runs. And then last year, that home run total dropped from 24 to 14. That's where he is again this year. He's been more of a doubles guy this season, as Bob mentioned earlier. 40, that's a career high. Went to high school in Encino, California. First round pick by the Twins in 04. The 20th player selected overall. Lays off there, and it's two balls and two strikes. Big Kenny Vargas on deck. He's hard to miss. Called strike three. Josh Colmenter rings up Plouffe for his fourth strikeout. But the Twins get one. They take a 1-0 lead. CenturyLink, your link to watch next. Mark Trombo, who homered twice yesterday in Denver, leads off the fourth here tonight in Minneapolis.
learning process continues also for Ender Inciarte and David Peralta. Another high throw over the cutoff man, over the catcher, off the backstop. Not the first time it's happened this year. You just have to wonder when it's going to sink in. I mean, that's one of the first things you learn as an outfielder is make a strong throw, but make a throw that can be cut off if there are trail runners on the bases. And fortunately, allowing those runners to move up an extra 90 feet did not cost the D-backs as Cole Mentor struck out Ploof, but because of the overthrow, the Twins had runners on second and third there with a good hitter at the plate, their number three hitter. Yeah, right in the middle of the Twins' order, even though they're a little undermanned as well. But uh, that's, I mean, I know occasionally you can lose the grip on the ball. Occasionally there's a little moisture. There's an excuse for it. But we've seen it happen way too often this year. Well, Ricky Nolasco now at 51 pitches, 33 strikes. He's behind on Trumbo. Two and one. That's Dave McKay, of course, who coaches first base and coaches up all the outfielders. Trombo pulls one down the left field line. That ball is well hit, and it is foul. But a good sign. We saw the second homer that Mark hit yesterday at Coors Field going the bleachers in left center. And that one was yanked down the line, just missed extra bases. Just a little too much English on that one as he hooks it right down into the corner near the 339 mark, about six inches into foul territory. And Mark said after the game yesterday in Denver, which was the same thing he told reporters before the road trip, there is no money for him to be found hitting balls on the ground. That's how he put it. He needs to drive the ball and get the ball in the air. And it is frustrating for him when he's not doing that. And you can almost see him, I think, Bob, visibly trying to lift the thing up in the air and get it up into that wind and let it carry wherever it is. It's nice to see him just pulling some balls the last couple of days, getting that bat head out in front instead of getting locked up by pitchers' pitches and putting them in play on the ground, which is something he said he doesn't want to do. He's been getting that bat head out front where he can really do some damage. Mark says if you look around the league and the guys who are in his same mold, that same type of player, and expectations for production, which are big, those guys, he says, are getting the ball up in the air, and that's what he's got to do too. He strikes out here. Second time that Nolasco has struck out Trumbo. That's five Ks for Nolasco. One down in the fourth. A nasty two-seamer this time by Nolasco. You can see Suzuki wanted it on the outside corner. That ball tailed down and in off the plate. Didn't exactly hit his spot, but a very effective pitch nonetheless. Pretty filthy right there. Miguel Montero, a strikeout victim his first time up. And the Nolasco signing to this point has been a near washout for the Twins. Who, as we mentioned, made him the most expensive free agent signing in their history. And a four-year deal worth $49 million. After splitting last year between the Marlins and the Dodgers in the National League. Miggy yanks that one down the right field line, but it's pulled foul. I mean, Nolasco, last three starts, he's been much better, as you see there. And Terry Ryan, the Twins GM, who we showed you earlier, says, look, a little too early to judge the Nolasco signing as a whole, only one year into a four-year deal. That's a strike. But Ryan was also clear in saying the Twins have got to have him bounce back because he's had an off year. And it's certainly not exactly what the Twins were hoping for when they gave him all that money. Pretty good career numbers for the most part. I mean, last year when he was traded from Miami to L.A. down the stretch with the Dodgers, Nolasco was 8-3. and three, An ERA at 3.5. He had good, good three or four months with the Dodgers there. And so Minnesota just desperate for starting pitching. They just needed bodies ponied up and gave them the 50 million. That's a fair ball to Parmalee at first, two down. Yeah, it seems odd to talk about a Dodgers pitching staff with Clayton Kershaw and Zach Granke and 
Young Jin Ryu, but Nolasco was probably their best down the stretch. He really was on a good roll at the end of the season. And it got him that payday. But he is getting $12 million this year and $12 million a year for three more years after this one. So it had better work out. And so far it has not. Aaron Hill single his first time. And it hasn't just been about the performance. Nolasco also missed a month and a half this year with a right elbow strain. And they think that the elbow has been feeling better as of late, which has been reflected in the results we just showed you. Last three starts, he's been pretty good. One and one on Aaron Hill. D-backs have out hit the Twins 4-2, but they trail it one nothing. Chris Herman. A two-out RBI single in the third, the only run of the game so far. There's a little swing and bunt number that Nolasco fields, and he will take it himself. So Nolasco has retired five in a row. He leads it one nothing. Darcy has nearly completed a rare feat here at Target Field, the flagpole trifecta. Now the Twins have that set up deep out there behind right, three flagpoles out there. There's a U.S. flagpole, a Minnesota flagpole. He has clubbed homers three quarters of the way up both those two poles out there, and he has just missed the hat trick, which would be that third one. That's hard to do. I got a feeling I know what he's going to try to do the rest of the year. <laughs> Hit the one flagpole he hasn't. Zualdo Arcia, he's got the middle one, and he's got the one on the left. He just needs that Twins territory flag to complete the hat trick. <laughs> and he's due up second in the inning after big Kenny Vargas, who flying out to center his first time. 6-5, how about this? 6-5, 275. You ever seen a guy that big? Frank Howard? On a football field. Yeah. And he began this year with double-A New Britain. 97 games, hit 281, 17 homers. And he just, they, they just blew off triple-A. They just said, get him up here. And he has been hitting ever since. And he will get first base. So Colmenter has walked one, struck out four, and now he's hit a batter. A little cutter just ran up and in. Looked like it caught Vargas possibly on the knob of the bat, but he reacts well enough to get the hit by pitch and head on down to first base. And so we'll get a look at Oswaldo Arcia. See if he can hopefully not hit that third flagpole out there. The Twins coaches have had their frustrations with this young guy. Rod Gardenhire said last month about Arcia. Every swing he takes, he swings so freaking hard, there's no possible way to keep your head down on the ball, and he's got to stop doing that. 
and Garcia, or Gardner said Garcia, and they've talked to him. Look, he's just not going to hit at this level if he continues to swing as hard as he possibly can all the time, trying to hit the ball 8,000 miles. And he needs a new uh, piece of equipment up here. Nope. Gary Cedarstrom going to call him back. That was interesting. Arcia started walking back to the dugout, and Cedarstrom said, nope, get back here. Well, that's uh, the rule that changed several years ago when they instructed the bat boys to have the backup bat ready to go for every hitter. They didn't want the batters walking all the way back to the dugout to get a new bat for a broken one. They don't want them going back to get more pine tar or rosin. Once you step in that batter's box, unless the bat breaks, you got to stay in there and finish your at bat. I guess he wanted to fine tune the pine tar or something. But Cedarstrom said, nope, get back here. Well hit center field AJ Pollock backing up backing up at the track and look at AJ go get it Vargas back to the bag at first AJ Pollock to the deepest part of center field here at target field Seems like we talk about it every time we go to Coors Field in Colorado, but outfielders that have good speed like A.J. and like Ender Inciarte and David Peralta, they love these big outfields. They can just turn and put their head down and go. They don't have to worry about getting close to the barrier. They know it's a big ballpark with big gaps. This is like a, a day on the playground for A.J. Pollock. It does have a Coors Field feel to it here. I know we just came from there, but it it does have that big cavernous kind of vibe to it. Kurt Suzuki, the catcher. That one's fouled off 0 1. Well, it's fair down both lines here. 365 in the right center field gap, 377 in the left center field gap. But straightaway center field, it's a little odd. It kind of cuts straight across. 403 just to the right of center, 411 just to the left of center. And that home run derby, they made it look small. <laughs> they always do, it seems. This is in the air to left center field. A.J. Pollock in front of Enciarte. So a couple of fly ball outs for Coleman after hitting Vargas, and that brings up Chris Parmalee. Talk, talking about the uh, home run derby uh, the day before the All-Star game this year. Uh, Fine radio analyst for the Minnesota Twins, Dan Gladden, a former teammate of mine. There's Danny. Actually got tickets for the home run derby. Unfortunately, they were in right field. And there was only one left-handed hitter in the home run derby, and nobody hit a ball that direction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's a shame, too, because right field is a great place to stand in this ballpark. They have a, much like Chase Field, that overhang. There's Dan Gladden. What a player he was. Well, he was a beauty. One of the best teammates I ever had. But they got a whole concourse out there by those flagpoles we showed you during the Garcia video clip. You can stand out there, walk up to the ballpark. Seats hang right over the right fielder. Yeah, literally over the right fielder. Those people in the front row uh, in that one section right there are actually hanging out over the field. And so if you put a whole bunch of left-hand hitting thumpers in a home run derby, they'd hit them to the target center, which is just across the street. So uh, your man Gladden was in the wrong section. Yeah. I don't know what he was thinking. Well, he was so much fun to watch. Oh, man. I mean, he came. It's a cliche, but he played every game, every at bat, every pitch, every ball in play like it was the last chance he was ever going to get to play the game. Boy, when you play with that kind of intensity, it's infectious. One and two on Parmalee. Two and two now. He was a catalyst on those Twins World Series teams. I know he played on the 87 team. I forget if he played on the 91 team. Check that. I believe he did. You're right. Yeah, Dan Gladden, uh, yep, 91 was his last year in Minnesota. Played on that 87 World Series winner. 
And the 91 team as well. That one is out to shortstop, just off with this. And Didi has got it. And so Cole Menter strands Vargas at first through four. He trails it one nothing. Alaska, the former Marlin and Dodger, leads the D-backs 1-0. And don't forget, fans, tweet us your fan photo. Time is running out. You've only got, uh, well, six more chances. Three games here and three at home against the Cardinals. So tweet us your fan photo with a Twitter and a hashtag and the whole thing, AZ Fan Photo, for your chance to have your fan photo shown in our game broadcast. I submitted my own fan photo tonight. I like nice. to do that occasionally. I took a great picture of Tom Candiotti here, which I hope will... Pass muster. Well, we'll see. All right. Jake Lamb leads off the fifth. Did some uh, walking around downtown with a wife, uh, the governor, and Candy. Checking out the sights down at uh, Nicolette Mall, head up an avenue down here. A lot to see. That's another reason this is one of my favorite ballparks, uh, even though we get here rarely. Uh, any ballpark you can walk from the team hotel to the ballpark and back, I like. Hashtag win. <laughs> yeah, we've got some good walks. Denver was a good one. This one, uh, maybe about 10, 15 minutes from the hotel. Not too bad. Target center right behind. You see that out there. That's where the Minnesota Timberwolves and maybe uh, Eric Bledsoe will be playing. Alaska has retired the last five he's faced. He's ahead of Jake Lamb, one and two. Full count. Chris Owings is on deck. So far, Nolasco has given up only four hits, all singles. He has not walked a batter. He's got five strikeouts. Jake Lamb bangs one into right for a leadoff single. Hey, fans, the most popular way to follow the September pennant races is with MLB.com at bat. It's the number one app for live baseball. You'll enjoy live look-ins, replay reviews, scores, live radio broadcast, the MLB.tv game of the day, and a whole lot more. So get at bat for your smartphone or your tablet on the App Store or visit MLB.com. There's Chris Owings who struck out his first time. A 
Lasko now at 70 pitches, 46 strikes. CO has got himself a single. It's into left. First two have reached in the fifth for the D-backs with base hits against Ricky Nolasco. Both struck well. Jake Lamb pulled his ball into right field with authority. CO does the same thing to a sinker that just didn't get down and in that time. Banged it through the left side for the second base hit of the inning. This is a pitch has been giving Chris some trouble recently. That hard sinker down and in. He recognizes fastball. He recognizes inside part of the plate. By the time he swings at it, the ball sinks underneath his bat. That time he ripped it into left field. So Lamb at second, Owings at first. No outs for Didi Gregorius, who flied out his first time. Ploof, a couple of steps in on the grass at third as Gregorius bunts that one foul. You like Didi bunting here? I do. Uh, just because he's been struggling at the plate, I, I don't uh, think there's any downside to Didi putting down a sack bunt and moving both of those runners up for one of your hottest hitters, Ender Inciarte, in the top of the order. And so Parmalee at first in front of the runner. Ploof in on the grass at third. And if indeed he does bunt, he should try to push it down that third baseline, keep it away from the pitcher, make Ploof come in and make the play. No sign of a bunt on the second delivery. And Ploof has really upgraded his defense. He has worked hard with Twins coach Paul Molitor, who was a pretty good player in his day. And Ploof's defense at third has been a major upgrade this year. Deedee ropes that one down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Lamb will score to tie the game. Owings is on the run. Glenn Sherlock will stop him there. And Gregorius is in at second with an RBI double. Seventh double for Deedee. It's a 1-1 ball game. Nice. That's the location. That's where Didi likes the ball. If he was going to ask for a pitch from an opposing pitcher, that's the one he would ask for. A little bit above the knees, inner third of the plate. Just let him drive it down into that right field corner. Now seven hits for the D-backs in four plus against Nolasco. A run is in. Still no out. Second and third for Ender Inciarte, who so far is two for two. He has extended his hit streak now at 11 games. Sender, a one-hopper to Vernier at second. This gets a run home as Owing scores, and it's 2-1 D-backs. Two hits, and now an RBI for Ender and Ciarte. Take what the defense gives you. Twins playing back up the middle. Ender Inciarte just got the bat out there, kind of guided that ball back toward the middle of the field, this time right at the second baseman to drive home the go-ahead run. So Gregorius is in at third. One out, here's AJ. Singled in the first, it kicks away from Suzuki, and Gregorius will score. 3-1 D-backs. Three base hits for Arizona to open up the fifth, and all three have scored. And Alaska, who had not exactly been sharp in the early part of the ball game, really struggling with his command here in this inning. He pulled that curveball over in the left-handed batter's box. There's another slider over there in the left-handed batter's box. We saw him try to throw a sinker down and into Chris Owings. He left it over the inside part of the plate. Bottom third of the D-back order, 7-8-9, Lamb, Owings, Gregorius. Three hits and three runs. And 
And how many times over future years do you think we'll say that? Lamb, Owens, Gregorius. Hopefully a lot. The kids are all right. AJ, nice take there, and it's full three and two. Still using that beautiful flame treated birch bat. Mentioned it the other day in Colorado. I had a chance to talk to AJ during batting practice. I told him that looks like a piece of furniture. Well, whatever it is, it's a chair leg, whatever you want, it's working out. He's two for three. I think you have bat envy. I do. That's a nice looking bat. I mean, back in the days when I played. You had flame treated or untreated. Those were your choices when I initially got to the big leagues. Of course, everybody went with the flame treated because it looks so cool. And then now you can get black barreled bats. You can get different colored handles, different colored woods, all the kinds of stuff now. It's a fashion statement. It's working. Joe Morgan always said he used a black bat at the stage of his career when bats started to become dipped in different lacquers or what have you. He always used a black bat because he said it was harder for the defenders to see the bat coming through the hitting zone, and especially in a night game. And I think there's something to that. I mean, it might give you an edge once over the course of your season. A ball that might sneak through because an infielder didn't get a good jump on a ball hit in play. AJ got a good jump there. He was off and running on the pitch, but Peralta fouls it away. It certainly makes it harder on the umpires. It might have if you hold up on a check swing with two strikes, get you an extra at pitch or two. Pete Rose used to take a rag with a uh, rubbing alcohol after every at bat and clean his bat so he could see if he hit a foul ball or if he made solid contact. He could look at the bat and see where the contact was made and then he'd wipe the mark off and wait for his next at bat. A lot of marks. That's a lot of marks. 4,000 plus. <laughs> I'm assuming they weren't all with the same bat, but uh, you get the gist of it. He, he was a real tactician up there at the plate, and if he saw contact on a bad part of the bat, he would make the appropriate adjustment next time he saw that pitch again. Who was the nuttiest guy you ever played with in terms of his bats? Joel Youngblood, without a doubt. A D back coach. Not even a close second. <laughs> Pollock takes off again. Here's the throw from Suzuki. And A.J. is in there. His stolen base, number 13. Now they're going to call interference here and bring Pollock back to first. Now the question was whether Suzuki made contact. On a stolen base attempt, when the batter gets in front of the catcher, there has to be contact, and the catcher has to throw the ball. I mean, your natural instinct right there is to hold up. But Suzuki does the right thing. Go ahead and make the throw. Make sure you make contact with the batter. They'll send the runner back to first base every time. It's like yeah, he clipped Peralta's his thumb. Retired, yeah. yeah, Suzuki looking at his thumb there. Yeah, he's still shaking it off, Kurt Suzuki, behind the plate. Yeah, your natural instinct as a catcher is to to hold on to the throw because you don't want to risk an errant throw to second base after you make contact with the batter, but you have to throw the ball in order for the umpire to make that call. Veteran catcher and all-star this year. Still looking at his hand, Kurt Suzuki. Made the right play. Peralta strikes out. Six strikeouts now for Delasco. Pollock back to first. Two down for Trumbo, who is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. A.J. takes off again. He wants that bag, and he's in there again. So now mark that down as stolen base number 13. And Suzuki is still Bob looking at that throwing hand. Now Suzuki's thrown out about 25% of the attempted base stealers this year. A little short hop throw down there to second base that time. Yeah, it looks like the D-backs runners, however, have picked something up on Nolasco. They've been getting some good jumps on the twin starter here. And you can't blame that one all on Suzuki. Three runs in in the inning. 
A.J. Pollock at second with two outs, a 1-0 count to Trumbo. He gets that one high up in the air, right center field, and that ball is gone. A home run, Mark Trumbo, two yesterday and one tonight here in Minnesota. That's his 12th, and it's 5-1 D-backs. He has found the home run swing on this road trip. He said he wanted to get more balls up in the air. He got that one up and out of here. Pretty good splitter working its way down below the knees, but Trumbo intercepted it before it could get down there and just does squeak it up into the flowers out there in right field. Two homers yesterday at Coors. Numbers 10 and 11. Put number 12 on the board here at Target Field and a five-run D-backs fifth. 1-0 to Miguel Montero. Eighth man to bat in this inning against Nolasco. You're just getting a little sample size, a little peek at what might have been and what was expected to take place. And Mark knows that. He knows he was brought in here to do a job. Essentially to hit home runs, hit long balls, doubles, drive in runs. The one thing the Diamondbacks seemed to lack last year, somebody to go along with Paul Goldschmidt and do that. Just be a thumper up there. And if you consider what happened with the foot, cost him about three months, and finally now coming around. This is the guy they thought they were getting. And hopefully might still have. Well, and obviously the home run is exactly what you're looking for. But uh, think back to the bat before. Even though he ended up striking out, he pulled the ball all the way down in the left field corner. Just foul. So solid contact a couple of times in this ball game tonight. Only the home run to show for it. And now Nolasco through four and two thirds at 90 pitches. Remember that streak in April before he had the foot injury. He homered in four straight games. Three of them at Coors Field where he homered twice yesterday. Mark Trumbo says he knows he was brought here to do a job. He wants productive at bats, and boy, are we seeing them on this road trip. Eggy staying alive with a full count up there and two down. Open is busy for the Twins. And a rough fifth inning for Ricky Nolasco. Three straight hits to open up the inning. Lamb singled, Owing singled, Gregorius doubled in a run. In Ciarte, a ground ball scored another run. Pollock singled. Peralta struck out. And Trumbo, a two run homer. D backs have now out hit the Twins 9 2, and they lead it 5 1. And there is a two out walk. So in Alaska, the wheels are off here. And Ron Gardenhire may have seen enough. He had retired five straight through four innings. He had given up only four hits, all singles. He had five strikeouts, but he implodes in the fifth. We'll take a break. It's 5-1 D-backs at Target Field.
actually. Um, I kind of they, they they did a really nice job with all aspects of it. Um, I've always found the ball to travel pretty well here too. I know that's kind of goes against what um, I hear every once in a while, but I think uh, it's been pretty fair and and uh, they do a really nice job with it. Well, Mark Trumbo, he likes sitting here. You heard that. That was just a few hours before game time, and he had a seven-game hit streak going against the Twins. So you keep that going here tonight with that home run that he hit and guys you can just tell that confidence level and whether he was just more trying to make contact when he first came back from that injury and settle for singles or doubles I mean now as you mentioned Steve he's made no bones about it he knows that he is paid to hit home runs and he's embracing that right now looks like a different guy Jody there's no question not only at the plate but just to the body language that weight seems to be off his shoulders a bit knowing that he's got the home run swing going again here is AJ Ochter a 46th round draft pick four years ago out of Michigan State just made his major league debut earlier this month. Aaron Hill, the ninth man to bat for the D-backs here in the fifth. Fastball changeup slider combination from how do you pronounce it? Octor. Octor. Okay. <laughs> Not overpowering by any stretch of the imagination. Fastball sits in the high 80s. We'll touch 90 on occasion. Good numbers in the minor leagues. Aaron Hill to miss that one. Octor split this year between double A and triple A. At a 2 1 70 RA in just under 79 innings. AJ Octor. 46th round pick. On the ground is shortstop Santana will go the short way for the force on Montero and that's the inning but the Diamondbacks get five including two on Mark Trumbo's 12th of the year 5-1 D-backs in Minnesota. Gave up two singles and a walk and then hit a batter to lead off the fourth. Suddenly has a whole new ground on which to stand out there. A 5-1 lead as we open up the bottom of the fifth here at Target Field. And as we look at Josh Colmenter and the year he's had this year, and we try and project, Bob, what the Diamondback rotation may look like next season, let's run through some candidates here. And I would have to think that Colmenter, even though he was in the bullpen all of last year, is now officially a starting pitcher. Well, you would think so. Obviously, we're looking at this just like the fans are at home, and certainly a lot of things can change between now and the beginning of the 2015 season. But based on what we've seen this year, Josh Colmenter has been a model of consistency, and it seems to me, I could be mistaken, he's taken on more of a leadership role with that pitching staff. I think some of the younger pitchers really look up to Josh. And uh, for me, what he's done this year, he's earned a spot in that rotation next year. 
Well, Josh says you always have to pitch to prove to stay here. And in that sense, he has been auditioning for a starting role all year after coming in from the bullpen to make his first start April 14th when Randall Delgado and Trevor Cahill were pulled from the rotation. And he has been a starter ever since. Aaron Hicks, who walked his first time up, leads off the fifth. So we're going to put Cole Mentor in there for next year. You're, you're down with that? Yeah, you know, like I said, we're just fans. That one's banged up the middle of the field by Aaron Hicks for a leadoff hit here for the Twins. Goes pass to diving Didi. And here comes Doug Bernier, the second baseman. Now after Josh, not that he's the number one guy. This is in no particular order by any stretch. And we've put underneath the photos here two words for each guy that we think fit. And for Wade Miley, you've got slider and ceiling. What is that about? Well, his slider has come a long way this season for being just an absolute wipeout pitch. When he's on top of that slider, uh, he, he can get anybody out, righties or lefties. And because of his stuff and because of his competitiveness, you have to believe that we haven't seen the best that Wade Miley has to offer yet. So with that in mind, uh, once again, a lot of things can change between now and the beginning of next season, but I think uh, Wade Miley has earned a spot in that rotation moving forward. Of the current starters on the staff, he has for you the highest ceiling, which means the ability to be the best of the group? I think so. I mean, you know, we've seen Wade really good at times, and we've also seen him very inconsistent at times. And uh, one of the things you like to see from a pitcher is to eliminate some of those bad outings and put together more of the good outings and I think with his stuff and with his competitiveness uh, I think there there's a very high ceiling for Wade Miley one and one to Doug Bernier there goes Hicks off from first the throw from Montero is a good one but Aaron Hicks is in there with his fifth stolen base Wade Miley and yesterday was one of those uh, inconsistent days there's no question about it you know you look back to that start at AT&T field in San Francisco when he was pulled out of the game after two innings was visibly upset with his manager Kurt Gibson his pitching coach Mike Harkey and I, I think that was a, a, a big step forward for Wade you know really trying to assert himself talk his way back into that ball game was upset when he wasn't given the opportunity to pitch out of a jam and you learn from that I think they may have either felt that Montero was interfered with somehow when he made that throw or that maybe Hicks did not beat the throw. And Kirk Gibson is out there talking to second base umpire John Byrne, and it looks like we're going to put on the headsets here. Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, will come over as well from out behind the plate. They are challenging the safe call at second base, we are told. Well, that throw from Miggy was oh, right there. Great throw. One of the better throws we've seen him make this year. Put it right on the money. CO with a quick tag right down on the helmet of Aaron Hicks. And you see right there with Chris pulling the glove out. That's what middle infielders used to do. Show the umpire the ball. Make him believe, yeah, I got the tag down. The guy's out. But with replay, I think middle infielders should hold the tag on the runner until timeout is called. We've seen a lot of guys slide into second base and in the process of exchanging from right foot to left foot, they're off the bag. Did he get him on top of the helmet before he got the hand in on the bag? Right there. Boy, that's close. And they win. He is out at second. The Diamondbacks have won the challenge. That's a caught stealing. Hicks is out. For the first out of the inning, great call by Alan Campbell, the Diamondbacks video coordinator. He had that one, and Kirk Gibson gets that call at second, overturned. And a terrific throw by Miguel Montero. Bernier's up there now with nobody on and one out. 2-2 two -two count. Well, that didn't take long at all. No, it was a lot closer than... Uh, the yesterday. amount of time spent on the replay would indicate. So the D-backs retain their challenge. Minnesota has not challenged to play as of yet. Well, Allen must have been pretty sure of himself because you sure would hate to waste your challenge this early in a game that you have a four-run lead. I still can't figure out how they didn't win the one yesterday. Yeah. They play at first base at Coors Field. 
Just a little fister into right. It's in front of Peralta who can't make the sliding catch. And Bernier has a single. So now that overturned call at second looms large. And that possibly would have scored a run had uh, the safe call been upheld out there at second base. So let's continue our run through what we think may be the D-backs rotation next year. Josh Colmenter, we've liked his consistency this season, his leadership. Bob has talked about Wade Miley with that wipeout slider and a high ceiling to become a top of the rotation guy. Chase Anderson, you and I both love this. He competes. He really does. He goes out there uh, many days with just a fastball and a changeup, a lot like Josh Colmenter, and uh, he gets after it. Fastball command, for the most part, has been really good, which sets up that devastating straight changeup. Uh, that's uh, the best pitch in baseball for me behind a, a well-located fastball. If you can throw a straight changeup with a deceptive delivery, which Chase Anderson does, uh, you can get big league hitters out. Every scout or evaluator I've talked to, they all say the same thing, and that's Chase Anderson has shown he belongs in the big leagues. He can pitch here. And so... From our standpoint, as we sit here on September 22nd, 2014, looking ahead to next April, we can see Cole Mentor, we can see Miley, we can see Anderson. Those are kind of your givens at this point. And keeping in mind, of course, a lot or everything can change over the course of a long winter, especially with a new front office at Chase Field. As Danny Santana takes his strike, it's 2-1. and one. Now there's a whole next level of guys that we need to get to as well who are possibilities for the rotation next year beyond those three. And at this point, I think it's fair to say there are more questions than answers. Our second category is, oh, don't pass me by. Don't forget about me. Let's start with Trevor Cahill. And uh, you came up with this word in our pre-show meeting, project. Yeah, and it's uh, a little bit too late in his career to still be considered a project, but I say that because his stuff is just filthy. You talk to opposing hitters, and nobody likes to face Trevor Cahill, but the results just have not been there. Mantana can hold up, and Colmenter gets the strikeout. That's his fifth. Now two down in the fifth is... Does he get a spot for you if you have to fill out your rotation right now for next year? Is he in your top five? Well, you know, with what we have in-house right now, what's available coming up from the minor leagues, I don't know where else he would fit in. But, uh, you know, if you're talking about earning a spot in the rotation for next year, I don't think Trevor's answered any questions this year. Two down. Bernie are still at first. Here's Chris Herman, the left fielder. And then there's Vidal Nuno, who we talked about ceiling with Wade Miley when we talked about him and his potential. I think if there's a pitcher who gets more out of his ability, I, I don't know if there is one than Vidal Nuno. Yeah, I mean, if you watched him at a tryout camp, you'd come away saying, yeah, you know, he's all right. Throw strikes. Which is what happened. He was a 48th round draft pick. But we've watched him compete against major league hitters this year, and, and he gets everything he has out of every pitch that he throws. Is that enough to earn him a spot in the rotation next year? I don't know. I think it depends, obviously, on other moves that are made and how it best all fits together. But, uh, you know, Nuno, for me, is a guy that you could slot in at the back end of the rotation, and he's not going to hurt you. He may not win a Cy Young award. He may not win 20 games, but he'll keep you in the ball game and give your team a chance to win if the offense can score for him, which they have not been able to do this year. He's really only had two kind of stinkers where mm -hmm. he just – didn't give him a chance to win. He should have, and we've talked about this ad nauseum, four, five, six wins by now. Home enter ahead of Herman, one and two with two outs, trying to get out of this inning and strand Bernier at first. You know, it should be pointed out that the Diamondbacks front office and uh, those who are going to be in the Diamondbacks front office next year may have a completely different opinion about these guys than we do, but... Uh, Randall Delgado, another guy that's kind of an unsolved mystery. We've seen him really good at times. We've seen his stuff really good at times. And other times, uh, extremely hittable and extremely wild. So uh, very much at this point, still an unsolved mystery as to where he fits into things moving forward. 
one has bounced to second right to Chris Owings and that's the end of the fifth inning we'll continue our tour of the 2015 rotation when we come back to Minnesota where the D-backs lead the Twins five Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Choose Chaz. Oh, baby. How about that? Now that's ballpark <laughs> food. And a lot of D-backs fans here with us at Target Field made the trip out from the Valley to check out this beautiful ballpark and their Arizona Diamondbacks in the last road series of 2014. Three here. An off day on Thursday, then three back home against the Cardinals this weekend, and that's it. Where did the time go? The Cardinals still hold a two and a half game lead over the Pirates in that National League Central. Yeah, those last three games yeah. may end up being big for St. Louis. I hope so. Jake Lamb bangs one in the center field. He's two for three. He continues to hit. Boy, really doing a nice job of using his hands more recently. You mentioned the, the strikeouts early on when Jake first got here to the major league level. Seemed like he was trying to use every muscle in his body to hit the ball. Now he just laying back, letting it travel, recognize the pitch, and then use your hands. Be quick. He has a long track record of showing a patient approach at the plate. And a knack for getting deep in accounts. That was the book on him in the minor leagues. In fact, Baseball America this winter listed Jake Lamb as the hitter with the best strike zone discipline in the entire D-backs minor league system. And now he's getting better pitches to hit. Well, when he first came up, he was swinging at everything. And now he looks like a professional hitter. Owens quickly down 0-2. A.J. Octor back out there on in relief of Ricky Nolasco. Owing singled and scored his last time up. He's one for two. And there's the strikeout. One down here in the sixth. Hey, fans, tomorrow all day with the D-backs here on Fox Sports Arizona. As we bring you eight and a half hours of Diamondbacks programming, starting with the re-air of, of this game, followed by the old cup of coffee, then at 4.30, game two, D-backs and Twins from here at Target Field. And then stay tuned for the D-backs live post-game show after the ball game. Don't miss all day with the D-backs, presented by Arizona Ford. Didi Gregorius, an RBI double, he scored a run his last time up. Part of a five-run D-backs fifth. Well, 
Sports continue trying to build a pitching rotation for next year. We talked about the guys who are in there, we think. We talked about the guys that said, hey, don't forget about me. And the guys who will be here, we think, at some point next year. And there's a lot of talent in this organization at the double-A level in terms of starting pitchers. And we've already seen Andrew Chafin here, who will start uh, tomorrow, actually. Getting another look at uh, Andrew at the big league level. Didi over the head of Dave McKay and foul at first. Yeah, and Andrew Chafin has been impressive in his two starts at the major league level. He, too, is a guy that really competes. We showed some shots of him in his last start. The focus that he had out there on the mound carried it right into the dugout between innings. Seen a little bit of Archie Bradley in spring training. Braden Shipley, Aaron Blair, same thing. Put up good numbers in the minor leagues this year, and I'm sure they're going to get an opportunity to show what they can do in spring training. Jake Lamb takes off. A good throw gets him, and Lamb is out, caught stealing. Kurt Suzuki. Running back stole a couple of bases on Suzuki earlier in the ballgame. In Cigarte in the first, and Pollock in the fifth, but he throws out Lamb here in the sixth. Well, Suzuki really takes his time winding up to make those throws to second base, giving that base runner an extra half a step or so, and Many times that's the difference in safer out down there. And Dini will get back in the box, so there will be no challenge here. Two, two, two outs. And Gregorius gets that up in the air. Well hit to right field. It's in the corner and it's off the wall. And Dini's on the run. He's in there at second with his second double tonight and his eighth of the year. There's that pull power that we see from time to time. Two doubles tonight for Gregorius, who's two for three. And we need the left field wall in right field for Didi. The left field wall is only eight feet tall all the way around to center field. And uh, just to the right of center field, it's 23 feet down there in that right field corner. Otherwise, that ball would have been long gone. Didi Gregorius, last 14 games, he's got 12 hits, five RBIs, two doubles tonight. Here's Inciarte, who has a pair of singles, a stolen base, and an RBI. He's now hit an 11 straight. Two and zero on NCRT. We'll take one last look at our candidates for the rotation next year, and uh, we've looked at the guys who we think will be in there. We looked at the guys who are on the bubble. We've looked at the young guys who are on the way up. We expect all four of those guys to pitch in the big leagues next year if all goes according to plan. And then there's the old stones waiting mm -hmm. on a friend. You've yeah. got Corbin and Arroyo off Tommy John, and we assume we are told that pitching will be priority one. In the offseason, go get a guy. Well, obviously, it'll be great to see Patrick Corbin back on the mound at some point after that. Bronson Arroyo hopefully will complete his rehab and be a usable piece once again for the Diamondbacks. And uh, yeah, we'll see about the uh, the acquisition. That's kind of uh, the area that the Diamondbacks have targeted for their offseason uh, trades or whatever the case may be, try to find another starter. Some of the keys may be the dates on those surgeries for Patrick March 25th, but for Bronson, the middle of July, and that may set him back in terms of 2015. In Ciarte strikes out, they strand Gregorius, and we go to the home half of the sixth. D-backs lead the Twins 5-1.
Hey, fans, be at Chase Field Saturday, September 27th. It's Hispanic Heritage Day presented by Budweiser. Come early for the pregame street festival presented by APS. And then the first 20,000 fans into Chase Field get this David Peralta Low Steebax T-shirt courtesy of Gila River Casinos. And then be sure to stick around after the game. We'll have a concert featuring Grammy-nominated Latin pop star Christian Castro. For more information and to get your tickets, visit dbacks.com. Here's David Peralta patrolling right field here at Target Field. D-backs lead at 5-1 as Trevor Plouffe leads off the sixth against Josh Kuhlminter. Plouffe so far 0 for 2. He has struck out twice. He does not seem like he is seeing the ball at all well against a guy who is a master at hiding the baseball. Yeah, Josh Kuhlminter can make some good hitters look funny up there at the plate when he's on top of his game. I would think for a team, just pick some random team like the Twins, American League Central. Diamondbacks have never been in this ballpark before. They would have no clue about Josh Coleman trying to pick up that delivery. And watching video from this, this particular angle, looking from center field over the pitcher's shoulder into home plate, you try to garner as much information as you can, but when you're turning around and you're standing in the batter's box facing Josh Coleman, it looks completely different. So you can only gain so much by watching video hitters will always tell you it's much more preferable to actually get in the box and see it with your own eyes this is bounced to third Jake Lamb spins and throws and Plouffe is 0 for 3 Josh's mom Melissa is here from Homer they drove what you say 600 miles? 600 miles holy cow has to be happy with what she's seen from young Joshy here tonight. <laughs> Joshy. <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said that. Now he'll work to big Kenny Vargas, who was flying out and was hit by a pitch. Kenny Vargas made his major league debut August 1st, which, oh, by the way, was his 24th birthday. That's coincidence, not irony. And in his first month in the major leagues, he hit 309. Seven doubles, four homers, 24 RBIs in 29 games. He hits this one way up in the air out to right center field, but it's an easy play for Pollock. Applause, applause from Mom. Two down. Vargas, talking about that first month that Vargas had. Our friends at the Elias Sports Bureau said that Vargas along with Joe DiMaggio and Albert Pujols, were the only players with at least 34 hits and at least 24 RBIs in their debut month in the major leagues. That's how good his August was. That's a short list. Yes, it is. <laughs> Osvaldo Arcia, 0 for 2 so far. I had to reach out to my own advanced scout. My son Michael played in Portland, Maine this summer, as you know, and played against Vargas uh, in New Britain, the Rockcats. And apparently got off to a really slow start, but I'm looking at his numbers here in New Britain this season. He really came on like gangbusters late. Ended up hitting 281 in double A, 17 homers, 63 driven in in just 97 ball games. And he's the guy who played all of last season just in A ball at Fort Myers and plays half the year in double-A this year, skips triple-A, comes up to the big leagues, and hits a ton. Arcia had three, you know, there's a strike. Every player's career arc is a little bit different. I mean, if the Twins were in contention in the American League Central right now, there's a chance he might not even have made it here this year. But because they're struggling the way they are, up, he's up here now and contributing in a big way. Marcy is retired. Five in a row set down by Josh Coleman. Century Link, your link to watch next. Mark Trumbo, two homers yesterday, one already tonight. We'll see him in the seventh.
group of about 30 season ticket holders for the Diamondbacks who have made the trek from Arizona, including Anne Marie and Frank Gennario. And Frank is the chairperson of season ticket advisory board for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And he is a diehard fan. He and Anne Marie are celebrating their 30th wedding anniversary today. So congratulations to the Gennarios. And in fact, Tony, their son, who's a bat boy over at Chase Field for the last couple of years, Tony's flying in tonight. And he and Frank have had a, a father and son kind of bonding going on where they have been. This will make 25 as far as the fields that they have been to, the ballparks in Major League Baseball. And they are not just going, guys, to any field for any game. They have to see the Diamondbacks play. So it's taking a little bit of time. So Frank and Anne Marie enjoying it. Anne Marie tomorrow, I'm told, is going shopping. But uh -huh. the boys are coming out to the field to see the game. Well, she'll be down there at Nicolette Ball tearing it up. Lester Oliveros is the new pitcher, just his fifth big league appearance. A.J. Pollock fouled that one in the seats. It's 0-1. Lester Oliveros had a good year in the minor leagues with Minnesota. 50 appearances between AA and AAA. Worked to a 1-6-4 ERA. And made his major league debut earlier this month. A.J. Pollock, a pair of singles. He has stolen a base and scored a run. Basically a fastball slider mix from Oliveros. Fastball sits in the low to mid 90s. Has a changeup, doesn't use it much out of the bullpen. AJ belts one to right center field. And that ball will not be caught. Arcia made a stab at it, but it's a leadoff double for Pollock, his third hit tonight. Osvaldo Arcia, we told you he's uh, he has some antics out there occasionally. and just took a Superman leap at that one. Yeah, they said he does some uh, ballet-like moves out there in the outfield. Little hop. That ball just hits off the fingers of his glove right there. You know who he looks like right there? Manny Ramirez. Yeah, really? Playing defense. Yeah, that's a good comparison right there. Manny would do that where he'd just kind of strike a pose. There was no way he was going to catch it. And A.J.'s got his 19th double. David Peralta. Well, we're told that Arcia plays the game with a little bit of flash, a little bit of flair. Nothing wrong with that as long as you make the play. A little dribbler to shortstop that Danny Santana scoops up. Pollock into third, one out. Peralta 0 for 4, and here comes Mark Trumbo. Mark, yesterday, Coors Field, two home runs. His first two at-bats tonight, he struck out, but his third time up back in the fifth, he clubbed one out of here into the flowers in right center. Infield will come in, which cannot be a comfortable feeling. With big Mark Trumbo up there at 6'4", 235, swinging out of his shoes. Ninety-seven right by him, our Chaz Roberts air conditioning. Cool play of the game. Mark Trumbo is twelfth. Two run homers tend to make the Chaz Roberts cool play of the game. That was actually not a bad pitch. It was down low. Outer third of the plate and just golfed it out of here to right field. He's trying to hit home runs now. I haven't seen Mark take some swings like that in a while. And he's upset with himself down in that dugout. He was right at his eye level. Two down, here's Miggy. Well, they must tonight. Here we go. You know, he searched so long for that home run swing coming off the foot injury, and he finally finds it, and it it's almost like it can be a negative because now he wants to do it all the time. It's a common phenomenon among baseball players. When they hit a couple of home runs with a nice, quick, natural, short swing, they get back to the dugout and tell themselves, boy, that was easy. I, I didn't even feel like I swung at that ball. Imagine how far I could hit it if I really swung at it. And then you get into some bad habits. Look out! 
Second row behind the Twins dugout. Miguel Montero's bat is under there somewhere. There it is, back in the third row. Everybody seems to be okay, thankfully. You see the way Miggy reacts. I mean, players are very aware of the danger sitting that close to the field when a bat or a ball goes flying up into the stands. A big sense of relief when you see that everybody's okay. Oof. Target field staff down there immediately making sure everybody's okay. There's a home run swing from Montero. A ball and two strikes. Miggy walked his last time up. You can see how close they are right there, the fans. A leadoff double by A.J. Pollock. He's at third now with two outs and a 2-2 count on Montero. Trying to get that run in. D-backs have out hit the Twins tonight, 12-4. A five-run Arizona fifth. Didi had an RBI double, and Ciarte an RBI ground down. Gregoria scored on a wild pitch. Trumbo hit a two-run homer. And here's Miggy, who had a three-hit day Saturday in Denver, had yesterday off. And Kirk Gibson told us in Colorado that he is pretty sure he will use three different starting catchers in this three-game series, including Bobby Wilson, who should get his first start here. Here's the home run swing from Miggy, and it's the second strikeout. They strand the leadoff double. Stretch time here at Target Field. D-backs lead at 5-1. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Cox Communications. Bundle and save with Cox. The mighty Mississippi here in downtown Minneapolis. Fans, FoxSportsArizona.com. All your online local sports coverage you won't find anywhere else. The Suns may be adding another Dragic here. Get the latest on that. And would Shane Doan consider a trade at midseason from the Arizona Coyotes? And the Sun Devils getting ready for the biggie against the Bruins. All that and more right now. Fox Sports 
Arizona.com. Boy, Josh Colmenter leads at 5-1 as we start the bottom of the seventh. He has rolled along here. Six innings. He's given up one run on four hits. He's walked one. He has five strikeouts. He's hit a batter. And it's been another outstanding start for Josh, who is 2-1 and one in his previous five with an ERA of 101. And so if you count tonight, as Kurt Suzuki leads off the seventh, let's see, in his last 41 and two-thirds innings, Josh Colmenter has given up five earned runs. Mm. Dealing. Kurt Suzuki 0 for 2. It'll be Suzuki, Parmalee, and Hicks 6, 7, and 8 in the Minnesota 7th. Michael Tonkin warming up in the Twins bullpen. Short night here for Ricky Nolasco as the D-backs got 5 in the 5th. Oliver Perez throwing for the Diamondbacks. And Colmenter now at 102 pitches. 62 for strikes. It's full on Suzuki. Josh has given up the four hits, all singles. Twins led it 1 0 on an RBI single by Chris Herman in the third with two outs. And then the D backs responded with a five run fifth, including Trumbo's 12th home run of the year. That's a fair ball down the left field line. And Ciarte plays it in the corner. And Kurt Suzuki, the all-star catcher, is in there with his 34th double. He's had a great year here. As good as Josh has been up to this point of the ballgame, I would expect to see some activity in that Diamondbacks bullpen. You're working your way through this Minnesota lineup for the third time. And all that deception and Fastball in, out, up, down, the change up. After you've seen it a couple of times, it's a little easier to know what's coming and maybe anticipate a pitch in a certain count. Mike Harkey with a long, slow walk out to the mound, which is usually an indication that somebody's warming up in the bullpen, and Mike wanted to give him a little more time to get going down there. I was going to say, he did everything but stop and read the paper on the way to the mound, and Gary Cedarstrom will break that up. Oliver Perez continues throwing as Chris Parmalee steps up. Cole Mentor now at 104 pitches. So here's Parmalee now, the former first round pick, 20th overall in 2006. The guy that has not yet worked out. He's got Suzuki at second, nobody out. Parmalee singled and scored the Twins' only run in the third. There's the strike on one. Parmalee, first round pick in 06, actually cleared waivers this spring. Began the year of the minor leagues. Didn't play a big league game until May 9th. First month of the season for him was with Triple-A Rochester. Hit 305 with seven homers in 32 games, but has not hit at this level. At least not a whole lot. Does have seven homers this year with Minnesota. Uh, high school in Chino Hills, California. Yeah, his professional career actually started in 2006 when he went to rookie ball with the Twins, but he was on a big league field well before that. In 1998, he won a Diamond Skills Award, which allowed him to shag balls during the home run derby at Coors Field. Ah. We were just there yesterday. And if you're going to stand out there and wait for fly balls, Coors Field is the place to be. Really not much to do, just watch him sail over your head. <laughs> Sports One, your new home for National League Division and Championship Series ball this year. 
Armley lifts that in the air to center field. A.J. Pollock should have room in front of the track. He does. Suzuki at second will tag and get into third easily. And that's the first out in the seventh. Here's Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks is a switch hitter. For his career at the big league level, he has been better from the right-hand side. But they're going to go now to Oliver Perez and flip Hicks around to that right-hand side where he's a better hitter. 50-point difference, in fact. Another outstanding effort from Josh Colmenter, who leaves here with one out in the seventh. Back after this. No. And now the guy out there on the bump for the D-backs at the left-hander, Oliver Perez, his 67th appearance this year. The last time we saw Oli was Saturday at Coors Field when he struck out four Rockies in one inning. They got Justin Morneau to strike out, but Morneau reached on a wild pitch, and then he struck out the next three guys. Four Ks in one inning for Perez, and now he's out there with Suzuki, the runner at third and one out, facing Aaron Hicks, who will bat from the right-hand side. As we said before the break, he is a switch hitter, and for his career at the big league level, he's been about 50 points better from this side. Two and zero. Oh. 67 appearances for Oliver Perez, a career high. Pitch 61 last season. And of course, he had that dead arm phase he went through. Got about a week off, and boy, sure looked like that issue was cleared up on Saturday against the Rockies. But can't find the strike zone right now. He's behind 3 0. Doug Bernier, the second baseman, is on deck. There are the career splits for Aaron Hicks. Hasn't really hit a whole lot from either side. There's a strike three and one. Man. 
have caught that outside corner. Everything Oliver Perez has thrown has been arm side. He's missed away, 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 and then nips the outside corner on the 3-0 pitch. We have seen that so many times lately, that 3-0 pitch. If it's anywhere near the plate is an automatic strike with almost every umpire. And now it's 3-2. and two. They just can't bring themselves to call that fourth pitch ball four, no matter how far outside it may be. It's almost like an instinctive reaction. I think it's called the human element, which we love, uh, which we love and uh, cultivate. Right? Not in officiating, no. I took a shot. <laughs> Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief behind the plate. Here's the 3-2. You know, with Josh Coleman on the mound, we talked a lot about the deception in his delivery. We talk about it with Chase Anderson's changeup, and Oliver Perez provides deception with his different deliveries. Gave him the full tee on on the pitch before, and then comes back with a slide step quick pitch on the next one. I mean, as a hitter, you just can't really get into a nice, comfortable rhythm against Oliver Perez because you never know what he's going to do out there. Neither does he. He did not go, says Lance Barksdale down there. And so that's a walk to Hicks. They're in the quarters with one out for Bernier. It will be recalled now. We'll get a pinch hitter. Bernier, the second baseman, has been recalled. Now that the Twins have a threat going here. And we'll see Yasmil Pinto. Who was getting his first taste of the big leagues last year. Played in only a handful of games, and he's back up this September. Yasmil Pinto, 25-year-old right-hand hitter. I might see him catch a game or two in this series. Ron Gardenhire, uh, much like Kirk Gibson, wants to get a look at some of these younger guys that haven't had opportunities to play. And Pinto is a guy that he said might get to catch uh, a couple of games in this series. Perez comes in and loses Hicks. They're in the corners. One out for Pinto. And Ollie's just having trouble throwing strikes right now. Pinto bounces that one fair over the head of Trumbo. Suzuki scores. Hicks on the run into third. And it's a 5-2 ball game. It looked like an AstroTurf hit over at the old Homer Dome. Ball hit some hard dirt on that right side of home plate and just shot up in the air over the head of Mark Trumbo at first base. Very late swing on a pitch up and away. Drives it into foul territory, actually, but then over the head of Trumbo back into fair territory. That run charge to Josh Kuhlmenter, who is responsible for Suzuki. Escobar will come in and pinch run for Pinto. We rarely see a base hit where the first bounce is in foul territory. Watch where this ball hits off the bat of Pinto. tough to tell from that angle. We'll get the other angle uh, from behind. It certainly looked like the ball hit in foul territory, but because of the angle, it bounced out into fair territory and over the head of Mark Trumbo. There it is. Watch where this ball hits. That's over in the left-handed batter's box on that outside line, and then back into fair territory and over the head of Trumbo for a base hit. So Pinto, the RBI, he comes out. Eduardo Escobar, who has not played since uh, September 16th with a right shoulder injury. There he is. Will run for Pinto. A run in. They're still in the corners with one out. Here's the leadoff man, Danny Santana, who's 0 for 3. Santana 0 for 3. Struck out twice against Cole Mentor. Twenty-three year old rookie. And since August 1st, he is hitting over 320 with a whole bunch of extra base hits. 
It's down the right field line, but drifting foul. Danny Santana, as Evan Marshall is now throwing, is a guy with good speed. Gets his share of infield hits and bunt hits. Quick hands and promising power. Pretty good line drive hitter up there. Suzuki has scored to make it 5-2. You've got Hicks on third and Escobar. The runner at first running for Pinto. This is a guy who has shown he will drive the ball to the gaps, especially in this big ballpark, for doubles and triples. And right now he is the tying run at the plate with one out in the seventh. And Perez gets the strikeout. Two down. Slider that time starts it at the bottom part of the strike zone, middle of the plate, bottoms out off the plate inside. Santana could not hold up. Third strike out of the game for the Twins leadoff hitter. And now I think we're going to get another pinch hitter here. Chris Herman, the left fielder, is due up. But instead, it's going to be Eduardo Nunez. Got Dozier and Maurer down there on his bench as well. We've seen Pinto. We've seen Escobar. And now Eduardo Nunez, who was just two for his last 20 at the plate. And once Nunez was announced, Kurt Gibson comes out to go get Perez, and he'll bring in Evan Marshall. Right-hander coming up. Right-hander coming in. Back after this. Next schedule has been released. Whole bunch of good matchups in there. You won't want to miss, including exciting weekend series against the Giants, Dodgers, and the Cubs. So lock in your seats today and get a guaranteed discount off single game pricing if you get the weekend season ticket plan. Now that gets you every Saturday and Sunday game plus opening day on Monday, April 6th. So call 602-514-8400 or visit dbacks.com slash tickets. Evan Marshall ought to try and get to Nunez here in the seventh and get out of this. Twin seventh is 54th appearance at 2.80 ERA. And Eduardo Nunez, two for his last 20, will hit for Chris Herman. Two outs, two on. Ball one. Part of the reason Evan Marshall is in here right now, he owns a 184 opponent's batting average with runners in scoring position. He stranded 22 of the 27 inherited runners he's had this year. Nunez, his first season with Minnesota, the former Yankee. He's up there with Hicks on third and Escobar running at first. Round to right to Didi. 
Underhand flip to Owings, and Evan Marshall puts out the fire. The Twins get one, and as we go to the eighth, the D-backs lead it 5-2. CenturyLink, you're linked to watch now. Three and four with ten saves and a 2.80 ERA at AAA Rochester this year. He's also the brother-in-law of Jason Coop. Look at you, fancy. And a couple of defensive changes behind him as well. Remember they hit for Doug Bernier, the second baseman. So Eduardo Escobar, who came into Run for Pinto, who got the base hit, will take over at second. And Eduardo Nunez, who hit for Chris Herman, replaces Herman in left. Aaron Hill, the DH tonight, will lead off the eighth. Aaron one for three, a single in the second. Devax trying to snap this six game losing streak. They have an outscore during the six game streak, 41 to 16. But they got a five run fifth here tonight and lead the Twins 5 2. They have out hit Minnesota 12 to 6. Tonight would also snap the D-backs road losing streak, which right now is at 10 games, their longest in four years. And would also hand the Twins their fourth consecutive 90 loss season. They used to win 90 games a year, now they lose 90. Aaron Hill. That's a fair ball down the left field line. It caroms off the seats. Escobar picks it up for Nunez. And Hill is in there safely. Aaron Hill is 26th double. Good start here in the eighth. Aaron Hill two for four is the DH. Well, the very description of where he's hitting in the lineup, you're the designated hitter. That means you are the player designated to hit. And Aaron Hill has done that tonight. Singled back in the second. Now a leadoff double down into the corner here in the eighth. Just caromed off that part of the seats that jut out in foul ground. And Nunez had to come in to get it. And so Aaron is aboard at second for Jake Lamb. Jake Lamb, two for three. He has a pair of singles. He scored a run.
Misses at 96, a ball and two strikes. Yeah, Jake Lamb with the job to do here. Leadoff man double, standing out there at second base. Got to move that ball to the right side of the field somehow. Ideally a base hit. At worst, a ground ball or deep fly ball to the right side. Move Aaron Hill to third base. Jake gets it up in the air to left, however. It backs up Nunez. And Aaron Hill will have to stay put one down. Each team has left six tonight. D-backs about hit the Twins 13-6. Here's the second baseman, Chris Owings. Chris singled and scored in the fifth. He has struck out twice, one for three. your little handy dandy tidbit how about this Chris Owings big fan of South Carolina Gamecocks football there you go everything you ever wanted to know about Chris Owings will be on that board at some point over the next three days as Chris grew up at uh, South Carolina went to Gilbert High School there Aaron Hill takes off for third the throw from Suzuki is not in time stolen base for Aaron Hill is fourth of the year and the third tonight for the Diamondbacks against Suzuki if you want to think of it like that. Now look at Aaron. Boy, did he sell that well. He's wiping his hands, just kind of casually taking a walking lead out there at second base as if there's nothing going on. And when Tonkin did not check him a second time, he just kept going. And Ciarte, Pollock, and now Hill all have stolen bases. Jake Lamb was caught stealing, thrown out by Suzuki. And now the infield will come in. And Santana has only one play. It's to first to get Owings, and that delivers a run. But we'll check on Aaron Hill now, who appears to have injured something on his right hand. He's not looking too good right now. It looked like there could possibly be at the play at the plate. He's going right into the clubhouse. Going on contact, head down, just motoring into home plate. Yeah, oh. that right arm just kind of tucked underneath there, kind of stuck to the dirt. His body rolled right over his right arm. And he went right to the clubhouse. Here's Didi Gregorius. So an RBI for Owings makes it 6 2. And that's six runs, Bob Brenly. Yes, indeed. Tacos. Been a while. And of course, we're on the road again. <laughs> well, maybe we can trade it in for some walleye on a stick. Yeah, unless there's a participating location of Taco Bell here in Minneapolis that buys into our six runs for tacos. Go down there and try and talk him into it. <laughs> Look, we have this thing back yeah. home. Now, I'm entitled to three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink. I've got my large drink. What I don't have are my three free tacos. Now, how can we make that happen? Yeah. Work with me. Pork chop on a stick. We can get you that down at the state fair. It's not the same. How about a corn dog? It's still not the same. I feel like I've earned tacos tonight. I can't argue. I like you have two. <laughs> Apparently, they're not selling a lot of walleye on the stick either down there. The line is not long maybe or the, existent. Maybe the fish aren't biting. I see what you did I've there. Been there before. You ever do any of that uh, ice fishing? That's big up here. No. No. I like to fish, but that just that doesn't even interest me in the least. Sitting on top of a frozen <laughs> yeah. pond, reading a magazine in a shack. <laughs> Wait for the line to tug. Didi pokes that one down the left field line, and guess what? Didi Gregorius is going to hustle in there with his third double tonight. Didi is three for four. He has doubled in each of his last three at-bats. It wasn't hit particularly hard, but it was hit to left field. I love to see this. We were talking about Didi the other day and maybe some adjustments he needs to make in his swing, and I think he needs to discover that there's another field out there. He doesn't have to pull everything to right field. Just flip that ball out there like we've seen Ender Inciarte do so effectively. A lot of base hits to that opposite field for a left-handed hitter. 
Speak of the devil, here he is. Two for four, a pair of singles. He's got an RBI, he's stolen a base. Sender in Ciarte. What's become for him a typical day at the office? Hitting over 290 since the All-Star break. 14 hits for the Diamondbacks. They lead it 6-2. D.D. Gregorius. Doubles number 7, 8, and 9 on the year to go along with his five triples. Kurt Suzuki out there to have a little discussion with Michael Gulf of Tonkin, the big right hander. High fly ball, shallow left field. Eduardo Nunez is there. And that ends the eighth, but the Diamondbacks and one more. They lose Aaron Hill. We'll try and get you some information on what may have happened to Aaron. It's a 6-2 ball game in the eighth. Minneapolis Diamondbacks lead the Twins 6-2. Josh Colmenter, another very good outing for Josh. Two earned on five hits. He worked six and a third. D-backs down one nothing. Got five in the fifth, including Mark Trumbo. Another home run is 12th of the year, a two-run shot. And they lead at 6-2 as Evan Marshall is back out there for the bottom of the eighth as they check on Aaron Hill's condition down there. Trevor Ploof will lead it off. Ploof, Vargas, and Arcia, 3-4 and 5. Plouffe so far 0 for 3. He struck out twice. Two balls and a strike to Trevor Plouffe. Big difference at the plate for Plouffe this year. Using the whole field a lot more. And there's a lot of room out there here at Target Field. This is a guy who was always a dead pull hitter. But that has changed. And now he's got a career high 40 doubles. And Plouffe says he has learned to trust the quickness in those hands. If he gets an inside fastball, yeah, he can still turn on it. He's now also... Taking what the pitcher is giving him, all that stuff, instead of always trying to look for something middle in. Now he's got a mindset to use the whole field. 
and it's made him a very effective number three hitter in this order. Slaps that one the other way foul. He's got a little thing he does that's similar to Mark Trumbo. Watch him as uh, he gets into the batter's box. He's going to hold the bat out there and kind of stare at it momentarily and then step in, be ready to hit. You know, we've seen Mark Trumbo do that a little bit longer than Trevor Plouffe, but uh, every hitter has something they do to kind of clear their mind before they get in that batter's box. And you said it. it. It's not so much a different mechanic. In fact, it's not anything mechanical at all, Plu says. It's just a difference in the way he thinks about what he's trying to do up there. Use the whole field. Go the other way. Don't always look for that pitch in that you can turn on. Nothing mechanically changes up there. But I guess once you kind of think differently, that opens all kinds of doors for you. I wouldn't know. I tried to pull every pitch they threw to me. Now, why would you do that? <laughs> well, I don't know. You know. 248. I figured the best chance I have is to hit 20 up in the seats if I can. And candlestick. Yeah. What was I thinking? <laughs> the wind tunnel was the right center. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> There's a little flaw in your theory there. Well, that's why I have the utmost respect for guys that can hit the ball to the opposite field with power. It takes such good mechanics to stay on the ball, get the bat through the hitting zone. A dead pull hitter, you're just looking for something middle in and catch it out in front of home plate, hit it as close to the left field foul pole as you can. This is a guy who has put in a ton of work with their hitting coach, Tom Bradansky. One of the great players here in recent Twins history. Marshall loses Ploof. It's a leadoff walk. Well, it's that time again. Uh, all of you who tweeted in your fan photo on the Twitter or the hashtag of the whole thing, a uh, look at our winner tonight and our AT&T fan photo contest. The uh, We only have six to go, and number six is Jacob. <laughs> oh, come on. What do you mean? That's a win right there. That's a solid win. Again, just absolutely... No holds barred, sucking up to the commissioner. Yeah, that's a two-handed 360 dunk right there. I can't believe that beat out the photo that I submitted. <laughs> which And I submitted a great picture. Absolute winner. And I'm going to file a complaint. Here's the picture. Now, keep in mind, we're in downtown Minneapolis, where Tom Candiotti and I went to the Mary Tyler Moore statue. Well, you know the rule about no varmints, and well, Candy Candiotti uh, falls into that category. He's doing the Mary Tyler Moore hat toss right on Nicolette Mall there in downtown Minneapolis. I mean, uh, I mean, who can turn the world on with his smile like Tom Candiotti? I think, you know what? He's going to make it after all. That was very nice. That didn't uh, pass muster, apparently. No, no World Series trophy there. <laughs> so the World Series trophy outranks the Mary Tyler Moore statue. Oh, yeah. All right. And big Kenny Vargas down 0-2. The expression on Candy's face, I thought, would that alone would win it. And by the way, he is in the radio booth next to us, and I can report he has gone through an entire bucket of donuts not a container of donuts a bucket of donuts which they sell here from the state fair well, there's our guy Vargas who strikes out for the first time tonight one down brings up Oswaldo Arcia who's 0 for 3 these donuts are unbelievable I got to tell you I'm saving him for the day game. I figure that'll be breakfast. Bucket of donuts. Plan ahead. That's good. <laughs> Osvaldo Arcia. Very aggressive young hitter. He's a first. Look at there. You go. Mm -hmm. First fastball he sees, he is swinging. In fact, this year the American League teams have figured that out. He has seen very few first pitch fastballs or anything in the strike zone for that matter. He is very aggressive up there. Oh, and there, there they go. are. Yeah, hot off the press. And then they dunk them in cinnamon and they put them in a bucket. And there you go. And Candy's bucket is empty. Now, I don't know how many the governors had down there, but the bucket is the bucket's right in front of Candy like a scorecard. And there's nothing in it. 
Oh, those are good. They got great food here at this park. I think you've said that uh, pretty much every ballpark we've been to this year. <laughs> That's great. It's one of the perks of the job. I like to do the lap, walk around, see what everything ends. I, I'm not going to try the walleye on a stick. I'm not going to go that far. But. I still have Philadelphia as number one. This is close. Well, they all have their regional specialties. Had the Todd Helton burger at Coors Field. That was pretty good. You're easy, though. Just give him some pizza. Yeah, just pizza. 2-2. Two, two. Osvaldo Arce is signed by the Twins out of Venezuela. Just turned 23 in May. He has been a top hitting prospect in this system for a while now. His first look in the big leagues was last year. 97 games hit 14 home runs. And this year the power numbers are up even higher. But the average has dipped a bit. They're trying to control that wild swing he's got. Kept his head down on that one that time. He's got all kinds of things going on up there. He's got a front foot timing thing. He's got hands that start way up high and drop down. I mean, he's all over the place. But when he puts it together, he can launch him. Chokes up on the bat ever so slightly in a two-strike count. I don't think it's going to cut down on his swing at all, but uh, maybe a little better bat control. But they have talked with him endlessly about his head, and when he takes a big swing, his head just goes all over the place. Pretty good that time. Right down into the hitting zone, got underneath that pitch, fouled it back off the backstop. He has worked with Tom Bradansky for hours in the video room and uh, in the batting cage. Reaches down and rolls that one to the second base. They try and turn two, but Arcia beats it out. Jake Lamb over there, the third <laughs> baseman in the second base spot. I'm a little confused. When you play these exaggerated pull shifts, how are you supposed to score that? That's an attempt at 5-6-3 double play, but the five was on the second base side of the bag. There he is, right in the middle of your screen. Yeah, that's Jake Lamb right behind the umpire there who initiates this double play to Didi, who was covering the entire left side of the infield by himself. And with all these defensive overshifts, people that were already sketchy about defensive metrics and some of the analytics now say, well, you got to throw all this stuff out because these guys are all over the place right now. Trying to calculate and come up with mathematical formulas to identify, you know, who has better range as a third baseman or a second baseman? Who can get to balls that other guys can't get to? But when the third baseman is playing second, what does that do for you? Covered a lot of ground. Went from his third base position all the way to the second base position to field that ball. Well, not really. He just got a really good read. So it's R.C. and first two down. A one count to Suzuki, who doubled and scored his last time. Yeah, we were talking a lot about the starting pitching and how it might shake out moving into next season. Evan Marshall is a guy I think will be even better for the experience that he's had this year. I remember when he first came up to the big leagues and I was asking him, how are things going? He said, I've never thrown this many changeups in my life. I mean, a guy with a heavy mid-90s power sinker, you can work your way through a minor league lineup throwing one pitch. But got here to the big league level, and Miguel Montero and Mike Harkey encouraged him to throw that change up, and it's become a good weapon for him. His breaking ball has improved. You bring this guy back next year as a three-pitch reliever instead of just a one-pitch guy, you might really have something. And he's pitched in some big spots, too. Didi on a short hop, and there's that arm to end the eighth. And as we go to the ninth, the D-backs lead the Twins. This is 6-2 at Target Field.
Splinter has been outstanding once again. The Homer Michigan native back in the great north. And he is our APS Energy All-Star. Two runs on five hits in six and a third. He walked one, struck out five, and uh, once again, Buck, he was out there taking care of business. You never know he's in a career high in innings pitch. Just seems as fresh as a guy coming right off of Salt River Fields to start a season. And as we start the ninth, the new pitcher for the Twins, a former Rule 5 pick from the Red Sox, it's the right-hander Ryan Presley. Recalled from the minors in July, his 23rd appearance since his recall. And he'll work to A.J. Pollock, David Peralta, and Mark Trumbo, 2-3-4 and four in the Arizona ninth. A.J. off the glove of Presley, but right to Escobar at second. That's the first out. Brings up David Peralta, who's 0 for 4. Peralta tonight grounded into a double play in the first. He struck out twice. Grounded out his last top. I'm <laughs> up and lines it right to Escobar. This is not your night. Two down. Hang with him. Will Harris throwing in the D-back bullpen right there with bullpen coach Mel Stottlemyer Jr. As Mark Trumbo steps up. Trumbo homered in the fifth, the two-run shot. His 12th of the year, and his last time up in the seventh, he struck out for the third time, and he swung at a pitch over his head. And so we'll see if Mark takes more controlled swings. He gets this one in the air. He might have another one here. And look at Aaron Hicks make a sensational catch up against the wall to end the inning. Mark Trumbo takes it high and deep to right center field, but Aaron Hicks is there to take the base hit away and send us to the bottom of the ninth here at Target Field. It's a 6-2 D-backs lead. for Derek Jeter's final weekend series as the Yankees take on David Ortiz and the Red Sox while Andrew McCutcheon and the Pirates trying to hang on to that final NL wild card spot against the Cincinnati Reds. That's on Fox Sports 1. It all starts at 9.30 on Fox and 10 on Fox Sports 1. Streams live on Fox Sports Go. Diamondbacks trying to snap this six-game losing streak and this 10-game road losing streak. Will Harris is on for the ninth. 
in the middle of a 14 game scoreless streak second highest uh, by a Diamondbacks pitcher this year Brad Ziegler had a 19 game streak earlier this season been really good since his recall from Reno on August 18th the ZRA is 0.61 in 15 ball games. The work to the lower third of the Minnesota order Chris Parmalee who singled and scored in the third one for three leads it off. Parmalee also hit the ball to A.J. Pollock in center field back in the seventh inning. They chased Josh Colmenter from the game. The second hard hit ball in the inning, and Kirk Gibson decided that was enough. And he spokes one into the seats for a loud strike one. Excuse me foul it's 0 and 2 good job by Diamondbacks pitchers today the twins have only two runs on six hits Minnesota since August 1st has scored more runs than any team in baseball all these young guys we've talked about Santana and Vargas and Arcia they've been hitting they have scored 245 runs since August 1st the most in the majors Anderson Reed throwing out there and they have been averaging more than five runs a game since the beginning of last month. But so far tonight, two runs on six hits. Mark Trumbo had a homer, had a double taken away. On a great play by the guy who's on deck for Minnesota, Aaron Hicks. One, two to Parmalee, misses away, two and two. Chases that one cannot hold up and there's the strikeout for the first out in the ninth. That brings up Hicks who has really been a fly in the ointment tonight. I just showed you that great catch he made in center field to end the top of the ninth. Taking extra bases away from Mark Trumbo. He's been on base all three times he's been up. A single and a pair of walks. First round pick out of high school in Long Beach in the 2008 draft. 14th player selected overall. And he'll turn 25 coming up in just about two weeks. And the Twins are getting a little impatient. And he has been testing their patience. That one just missed the radio booth. Almost landed in Candy's donut bucket. Well, there's plenty of room in there. All the donuts are gone. Tonight, over 22,000. A Monday night. Football season, all that. Twins have had a tough year here. But uh, slightly less than that now. And it kind of sounds like the games used to sound back in the dark days of the Metrodome when everything echoed in there. Off the baggie and under the bubble. Two two is belted right to Didi, and that's the second out. One more out to get, and here is Eduardo Escobar. He has been out since the 16th with a right shoulder injury, so today is his first action since last Tuesday. He's done a good job for them at shortstop, but kept Danny Santana out there in center field all summer long. 
And sure enough, first pitch swing, and he dumps it into left center field. Eduardo Escobar. He has hit a little bit this year for the first time in his career. Danny Santana, who they still say is the shortstop of the future. He's playing there tonight after playing center all summer long. The Twins looked at Santana's speed and his offensive abilities. Had a really good year at the plate. And they thought, well, maybe he profiles in the outfield better than at shortstop. And they decided that for now, he was their, their best option in center. So they pulled him from short and just said, go out, do the best you can, and they hope for the best. Covers a lot of ground out there, has a very good arm defensively. But they have Hicks here. They have Byron Buxton, who's coming. And while Santana has been in center, Escobar has held down the fort at short. Item up inside. There is a strike. Look who's on deck. So Mauer power. And you want to make sure you get Escobar right here. Or Santana, pardon me. There goes Escobar. That is in the seats and out of play. Well, if indeed we see Joe Maurer take a pinch hit at bat here, it would be his first of the season. You ask about the difference between the American League and the National League. Here's one big difference. Twins have used, well, they've had 80 at bats by pinch hitters this year. Diamondbacks have had 223. Different game. Slow roller to second. Here comes Owings and the Diamondbacks snap the losing streak at six and the road losing streak at ten. And they win the series opener in three hours and 14 minutes. 6-2. Mark Trumbo, another homer, his 12th of the year. Yeah, a lot to like tonight. Josh Colmenter setting the pace in the early going, really mowing down these Twins hitters. And good to see Mark Trumbo continuing to flex his muscles. And we have news from the clubhouse on Aaron Hill. It is a dislocated tip of his right pinky finger. Dislocated tip of the pinky finger for Aaron Hill on his right hand. He is as of the moment listed as day to day. We'll get more on that on the Diamondbacks Live postgame show, which starts right after this break. As the D-backs snap the losing streak, they win at 6-2 here at Target Field. Back with a postgame show from Minneapolis after this on Fox Sports Arizona. 